This podcast is rated TV PG for fantasy violence and language. Welcome back to Star Wars Birth of the Republic Tabletop Role-Playing Game, Episode 8. I'm Kirk, and I will be your storyteller. I am Andrew. I play Hakru, the Zabrak Scout. I'm Eric. I'm playing Lashara, the Bothan Noble. I'm Greg. I'm playing Dodd, the Human Scoundrel. Yeah, I'm Seth, playing Jad Marqueda, the Rodian Scoundrel. This is Mary, and I will be playing Rura, the Tagorian Scout. Last time, we dealt with the aftermath of the um, fight in the town. Uh, The group decided to um, go and tie up a loose end in the uh, city of um, Ghana, I believe, and uh, put to rest any fears that there may be retaliation against the, um, the town for slipping the the bounds, the, I mean, the the clutches of the Tatari. So you guys went in and did a direct frontal assault of the city center and uh, burst into uh, Arala Shul's uh, office and started blasting, pretty much. <laughs> uh, floated a grenade in first, and uh, they kind of saw it and started shooting about that time. Um, Dodd walked in and, and I think made a, started to make a speech or, or did something and then everything just kind of broke apart. So uh, you did manage to capture her and she is going to be uh, held by the local authorities um, for a trial. They're still trying to decide who's going to take over in the meantime, if it's going to be one person or if it's going to be a council, they're not sure. Um so I believe you guys, that was pretty much it. You were going to, they don't have any more tour yet. It's going to take them about a month to get another load uh, harvested. Um, so I don't know if you guys just want to go back to um, Har- Haro on uh, Dirk Teal and see if he can upgrade your ship or get weapons or whatnot, but... That was kind of the only loose end, I guess. So Yeah, I have it listed that we decided to help them build back up while the next mining load was gathered. Right. Um, so that we could go back to uh, sell that load of tour. Right, because we needed that load of tour in order to be able to afford what needed to be done to the mining ship. We also needed to... We also wanted to be there to make sure that those hydroponic farms or whatever that we purchased for these people that those got installed and properly mm-hmm. and yeah. also you know just the village had gotten really yeah. screwed up so it, this was very much the like we made a mess and now we're helping to clean right. it up uh also a reminder that haro that you guys dealt with with the hydroponics he offered to install them uh as part of the price that you guys purchased them yeah he is also a commercial builder So if you guys want to sweet talk them and see if you can owe them a little bit to come in and actually repair the, the town, you can do that as well. He just needed to go ahead to, um, bring the stuff in and install it, make sure that there was no pirates hiding out, you know, to stop him. What are we thinking? 10% off the price of the next load of tour. If he goes ahead and does an advance, it's up to you guys. No one's talked to him. Um, 
Also, this is a crew should not be making this plan. Right. <laughs> so it's up to you guys. Like I said, no one's talked to him, but he is a, I mean, that's his thing. He's a commercial builder, so he can come in and build stuff for them. Maybe do some other upgrades to the town, maybe a wall around it or something. So that, that way anything in the future has to come in through a certain area or a certain, you know, entrance way. That way you don't have to build all these barriers and stuff if something else are happens. we Are we wanting to build like a stronghold or are we just want to stay Firefly-y and uh, our ship just staying afloat? It's up to you guys. I, I kind of feel like this is not home. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Her, her crew very much feels the same way. It, like, okay. there, there, there's one thing repairing the damage that was done. There's another thing of like, as you said, building a stronghold. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the other... Um, um, things you have is the map to the temple um, and that is going to take about a month to get to and maybe a month back so you guys have got some time to travel while other things are being built and done sort of behind the scenes you guys don't have to literally be there picking up bricks when uh, Haro has a whole you know crew that can come out uh, and do it all for you it's like there's a temple on this planet no, 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 no. no. This is uh, relating to Ashara's kind of uh, story. She's. Yep. Uh, I, I, we. How much? How open are you discussing that? Because we were sitting there piled on the on the mess room table right. with computers analyzing that stuff for like a day and a half. Yeah. There's yeah. there's no way no one on the ship doesn't know about the map to the temple. Basically. Right, and I I I, I the player admittedly had forgotten about it, which That's is why right. I was like. I, don't think it's here on the planet is no. it no 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 it's no, it's like it's out it's out like way out way out right well lashara votes for um going back to haro and um just just finalizing the whole deal like we want to help these people people get back in into um a nice living style maybe not nice but you know a comfortable living style after all this mess that they've been through get their right. hydroponic pretty, um, pretty heavy price for this freedom true so, right so i feel yeah. like lending them a little bit of help would be not too bad right. get them back on their feet but not just on their feet them. but thriving right. yeah I, yeah i also want to distance ourselves from them and start creating a business relationship so that we don't end up with um dependence right. right well and that that was my next point is if we don't want to build something here we at least just want to build the contact here and then get the hell right. out right yep yep yeah lasara's 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 diplomatic instincts are in alignment with my business acumen how's that <laughs> sounds good to me yeah uh, Meanwhile, Chad is like, when do we get to go back to fighting? And, the and, and says, says, how long is it going to take to fix my e-web? I've got some holes in me that need some yeah. work. So, All right. Yeah. So you guys can send a message to uh, Harrow. You don't have to actually go back. and Unless you're wanting to pick up items at the market that was there or... When I do send him a message, I want to do it via vid feed if it's at all yeah. possible. Yeah. Because last time when we left there, it looked like there was some possible gang activity headed in his direction right. and yeah, i feel you, like he would find a way to surreptitiously let us know if we were walking into a trap right so yeah you can talk to him directly okay uh image comes up on the on the desk or wherever you're at the workstation uh, yeah and he says good to see you again dot hey haro it's been a long night how are you i'm doing good We've got uh, two ships loaded up and ready to, to head out. Uh, is everything clear? Yeah, outstanding on your part. Yeah, we're set here. We've got, uh, we got, do you have maybe a, a handful of extra, extra laborers you could send along? There was maybe some damage to the, to the dwellings within the, the town that could use a little bit of extra help. Oh, yeah. Kind of low tech buildings. Yeah. So. Not, and these are the miners, right? That that are actually delivering this tour. Yeah, right? I feel like I yeah. feel like we can work out some sort of discounted price from on the next shipment of tour on their behalf. Yeah, to make it work. You know, maybe uh, we'll work out the logistics. Maybe just an exclusivity for the next cycle, next year. Where I'll I, check I, with my I'll check with the crew and make sure they're in alignment. But I don't expect any problems there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all I need is to be able to 
offer this service across the galaxy and I'm the only one that can can do it or get it to people. So exclusivity should make you a wealthy man, sir. Yep. And after a year then it can break up and other people can, you know, be sold to. Yeah. Meanwhile, um I believe we discussed some perhaps some upgrades and repairs to our ship. Yes. Um we've got uh, I've got some uh, I've got some ideas, but I'm going to get with everybody. I think we're going to be heading your direction fairly soon. If I advance those to you, you can kind of give me an idea of what your costs are, and we can negotiate what yeah. I see you. Yeah, we could do that. Sound good. All right, fantastic. Um, Haro, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm curious. You, um, when we left, I feel, like, um, I feel like things were in pretty good shape. How are you doing otherwise? Um, everything... Everything's quiet. Moving smoothly. We uh, quiet, huh? we did run off those uh, those uh, gang members. We found them lurking around, and we ran them off planet. So okay. we're now looking for you know actively looking for anybody with that symbol gotcha. or the pin. I would also be actively looking for somebody that has uh, some pretty strong security details. These guys are fairly well organized. We're coming to find out. And they have a web that runs pretty far. Okay. So I, I expect that they have the resources. If they wanted to make a real problem for you, they may actually have the uh, have the have what it takes to make it trouble. Okay. Well, once we start getting this tour in and I can sell it, then I'll have a lot more resources at my um, at my call to, to beef things up. So. All right. Sounds like we got a deal. I'm going to go back to the rest of the crew. I'll ping you when I'm uh, when we're we're heading out, so you know when to expect us. Sounds good. All right, thanks, Haro. Haro. Appreciate your time, man. Yep, Haro out. It sh- shimmers down. <clears throat> I'll go back to the crew and uh, everybody else while we're kind of stacking boxes or whatever it is we're doing and. So I explain kind of the context of the conversation, ask if everybody's okay with the, with the plan. Lasharo. Yeah, Lasharo's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Jad, Hakru? Yeah, I think it sounds pretty good. Okay. I look to the pilot. No, that says it sounds good to me. All right, cool. Let's get underway and we'll send that ping. Let's see what we can do about... Uh, is how long do we have until this next shipment's going to be ready? I figure we can taxi out. About a month. Get these, okay, we can get these upgrades done. Maybe find a, another piece of work on the side and then come back and get this straight. Okay. If the repairs are quick, who knows? I'm not a mechanic. Yeah. We'll have to look up the actual cost of the upgrades. Uh, but I thought it was going to be you guys deliver the next stuff, and then with that money you guys can buy the upgrades. We could. We also are sitting on a stockpile of twenty two thousand. Um, what do you think, Nanat? Do we fortify the ship and make ourselves safe closer to now? Or do we hang around and wait, get some resources and then and then fortify the ship? Hmm. I would like it's to your ship. I would like to make a payment to your friend. I still owe I him fifteen. All right, then I guess let's stall out for a little bit and see what we could do about getting that shipment of tour out before we go. All right, I'm going to be in my bunk. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got some Swiss cheese <laughs> for skin. Um, I'm not feeling great right now. So, uh, yeah, you know, you know who I'm going to miss after we leave, don't you? I get blank stares from my the entire crew. <laughs> what is I don't that? even know if a crew stopped working. I think he's still like loading boxes and stuff. This dude's got a work you, ethic. You can't um, be referring to old Lena. Yeah, Lena. She was uh, she was a pretty profound presence on this ship, didn't you think? Also, she can cook. <laughs> I'll give did, her that. I did learn many things from her. Yeah, I'll be in my bunk. Um, See you guys in a while. Okay. Nana says, so, are we going to sit here for a month? Uh, I don't think we should do that. So, uh, some credits. Hmm. If, 
Is there any way that we can get out to where we need to go with some modifications to the ship uh, to, to check out this this ancient map? Uh, they're not. Um, or is it going to take too long before we're, uh, we'd be back? Um, he says the ship will, the ship can go out there. It's not that's not a bit that's not a problem. Um, it might take us some time to get back, but they'll just have a double load that we can run in two days and make twice the money. The uh, is Dot here? No, he left. Um, well, that would, that would, that would, uh, really make me feel better. I, I feel very drawn to this map. I feel, I feel a pull towards this temple. I kind of can't explain it. It has something to do with my new skills in the forest from Lena, but, um, I feel very drawn to it. Maybe I'll go talk to Dodd and see if, if he would mind doing that. And if it would slow things up for the village or Harrow at all. Okay. Yeah, so she's gonna go in and knock or hit hit the hit the buzzer on Dodd's door. Door opens <clears> up. <throat> He's sitting in one Dodd. of the bunks. Hey Lash. Dodd, I I've got I've got a question for you. I know that we've yeah. just finalized our plan, but um as you know, I'm uh this temple is super intriguing to me and I've kind of run out of resources for um, for finding out more about my abilities, and, and I, I want to learn more. I just talked to Nanat, and he says that we, we could make it out to the temple um, and be back in time to do two loads for Haro. I know you'd probably have to renegotiate something with him, but do you think that'd be possible? Uh, yeah, I'll do that. That's no problem. As long as we've got enough food and supplies and fuel to do the trip, I think it's. I think no we just made. I think we just made plenty of money to, yeah. to, to supply up. Okay. How does how, how does uh, how does money transactions work in this world? Can you wire people things? Or do they oh, yeah. actually take so. physical? Okay, so we can theoretically find a bank. Yeah. Deposit enough money into it and then send that to the person we bought the ship from. Right. And supply up and maybe get me some new clothes that don't have holes in them. Yeah. Um all right, Lashara, why don't we do this? Let's let's take a day, take care of some administrative stuff and maybe resupply. And if everybody else is good with it, let's just head out there because I know this is important to you. And frankly, I'm really curious where this is gonna go. Well, it is it is a very, very old map, and if anything, um, I can't help but think that this is one hell of a treasure hunt. And her eyes kind of light up a little bit, like that—that that idea intrigues her as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's what I was hoping you would say. All right, let's do it. Uh, you guys don't mind if I relax here while we're getting those supplies? No, no. How how are you feeling? Are are you getting patched up okay with the uh, med supplies we have, or do we need to go uh, pick up no. some? Uh, back to i'll be fine i've got like what 12 hit points i think <laughs> <laughs> so a month trip sounds great to me right now yeah but, uh, to lashara i say i'll be fine i'll be fine we'll just uh let's just get it done give me give me a couple nights of sleep and we'll be we'll be great but let's if you can execute that part of the plan get with nanat make sure that the the deposit and the transfer happens if you don't mind, try to find me some clothes. I trust your sense of style. And uh, let's get on the road. Let's do this. No time. All right. Let's um, uh, so Nanat's starting uh, pre-takeoff. Now, is, are we going to have to, like, planet jump a couple times to get there? Or is this just like a straight journey? It is not a straight journey. Uh, okay. It is, since the hyperspace lanes are curved or are do that sort of thing. I'm assuming there's lots of stopping and then yeah. re-navigating. Um, yeah, and, I, and there's there's fuel costs and stuff involved, and I don't I don't know. Does it address that in the rules? I guess. Uh, travel in the galaxy. It's all about astrogation, and I, I didn't find anything about like fuel and things like that. So, unless there's something else in like the wiki which i didn't find 
So on page 14 of Starships of the Galaxy, there's just there's a refueling and restocking where it just says starships of colossal or smaller size, refueling, refilling one day's worth of fuel, costs about 50 credits, uh, multiply it, and blah, 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 blah. A starship uses this much fuel after one day of flight in real space or hyperspace. Hmm. Okay. So it's basically 50 credits a day if you're flying. So we need about $1,500 in or credits and fuel to get there and another 1500 to get back. Yes. So is that right? 30 times 0.5 or 50. Yeah, I, I did it with the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's not too bad. No, we can handle that. Yeah. Space Ministry, hyperspace. So yeah, not too not too terrible. Um, there is a map that's up now of the system of the galaxy with a marker where you guys are at and a marker where you need to go. Where did it go? And I guess for... What do I do with it? We're literally going off screen. Yeah. <laughs> About as far as you can go, pretty much. So, uh, a lot of the smaller routes, I'm going to say are not there, since we're a thousand years before when this map is supposedly, you know, fresh. So, we're going to, it's basically jumping. You could sort of jump through things. It'll take a little longer, or you could get on one of the um, big hyperspace things, uh, lanes, and it'll take a little less. So, so the, where is our... So, sorry, this is just me just trying to keep track of stuff. So, we're going from... Is the plan to go by that... Um, Industrial complex first, or not industrial complex? Dirt uh, teal. What's up? Dirt teal. Yeah, is it? Are we planning to go by there first, or were we going to go just straight shot to there? I thought we were going straight shot. Yeah, yeah. Our, I'll our, notify uh, uh, Haro to let him know that that it's going to be about a month and a half to two months before we're ready for the first delivery. Okay, but it'll be a bigger delivery. But it'll be a much bigger delivery. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll have the capital to do the ship stuff that we want to do. Right. <clears throat> so. So I guess this map that we found has hyperspace lanes past like Baccarat and whatnot. Uh, no. That is all going to be. That's going to take twice as long to sort of navigate through those. Um, those squares. Uh, I basically just came up with the if you're traveling through the lanes um if you head up to like naboo and then start following that around it's about a day to pass through each square and i know there's a hyperdrive modifier but i think that comes into play like if you're trying to navigate through like the deep core where you're having to stop and do a lot more changes but i could be wrong i could be wrong um, I don't, where is the Ripper? Because the way they have it written is your navigation is rolled like a D6 times, uh, times your modifier. And that's extra days. So. Wow. Okay. I thought I had it, but I do not have it up. Where is it at? So. By that, it'll be 13 days to get to Bakara. Right. And then we're in wild space. Right. And that's... That's where it takes two two days per... If, if everything goes okay. And um, that is when we didn't take any small routes. We only took the major highways. Right. Because you said that the smaller ones probably weren't there. Yeah. If um, we could take the small ones... It'd be a lot faster. Five days. <laughs> Yeah. It's like five or six days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your your hyperdrive is a times three. So you would roll like a D6 for a certain trip uh, and then multiply that times three. And that's how many days it's supposed to take to get from here to there. But it's all 
wishy-washy a little bit. Because random encounters happen? Well, I mean, just to having the, the roll a D6 and then it's times your times your hyperdrive. I mean, if you're doing the same route back and forth, why would it be fluctuating that much? Mm-hmm. So. Okay. I, I think it's because um, they even acknowledge this, like, in, like, some of the legacy books. Uh, you can only take certain highways at certain times because of planetary cycles. The main roads are just corridors that are almost always open. Right. So they're almost always safe to travel on. Whereas a lot of like the, the like the smaller and thinner, the less used ones, those probably have like a moon where it's like, hey, for these three months, you can't take it. Right. Yeah, that that's why you need the need the advanced navy comps because it's not just highways. There's always, always, always modification that needs even through the hyperlanes because planetary movements and spatial body movements. <clears throat> All right. So where do, where do we stop first? That's up to you guys. Uh, I guess what we could do is... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, Whichever route you guys want to take, you're more than welcome. If you want to sort of skim by Naboo and take that outer, like near Solist and Iridu. Yeah. And you can kind of fly over past Bespin and stuff. So Maybe on our trip we can... Uh... You know, if anything is going in that direction, we can see if anybody wants us to haul some that is true. cargo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who wants to put out a um, a feeler um, for anything like that? That would be using the um, Holonet used computer. Yes, this sounds like a job for me. <laughs> yep. All right, let me get back to the dice roller. So, looking for a job. Use computer. I believe that's under use computer. How about a 33? That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I, rolled a, I rolled a 19. My use computer skill is 14. Yeah. I should have put on that. I should have put on the, the glasses though. Yeah. It would have given me another bonus. Yep. My my uh, my nerd senses just tingled, and I thought about Star Trek uh, uh, when they go back for the whales, and Scotty's there, you know, talking about <laughs> computer. And he starts like, "Hello, computer." Yep. And he like starts just. <laughs> well, <keyboard laughs> that was not. <laughs> yep. Oh, how quaint. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that even beats the DC. Uh, so the job you find right away is from Naboo to Sullis, and it's 3,000 credits to uh, transport six cases of uh, earth, dirt, okay. dirt, and, dirt and water. So Nice. That'll pay simple. for our fuel both ways. How long does it take me to heal from 14 hit points? Natural healing is in a 24-hour period, if you're not doing anything crazy, is your character level. Ooh. Wow, we're gonna be at this for a while, kids. We just need five days. That's yes. well, half of our trek. That's yeah. less than half of our trek well, to get outside. The funny thing about that is it scales. You never heal faster, even if you're a badass, because your 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 level goes up. But so does your hit points. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. So you got some time to to sit around and and everything like that. Um, nope. Are you yeah. still below half health? Uh, yeah. Then yeah. you can second wind on one of those. Can I do that when I'm not in combat? It says or any like time. Is it once per day? I it's think it, once per day, provided you're below 50% of your head points. Yeah, so once you get over 50%, you're kind of... Okay, so how does that work again? That... You spend your swift action, and on that day... Like, I think you've already done it today, if it's the same day right. as the fight. Well, I'll do it tomorrow, then. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll, I'll drink a and you get and, be, and you get one quarter of your hit points tomorrow. back. Yeah. Or okay. or constitution, I think. Oh yeah, it's one quarter of your hit points or your constitution yeah. score, whichever is higher. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, it was at negative one, and I second winded, and ended up at twelve, and so my maximum hit points are thirty four, 
So I'll be at 20. So you do it one more time. 26. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, so you do that and then you spend two days resting and yeah. then boom, you're good. Yep, not too bad. We, we took you from five days to three days. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. All right, so one, two, two days go by. You guys land on Naboo. Um, it's just some soil in these crates and a, and a crate of water that's going to Sullust. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, real quick, during that, uh, that will be an the time getting from um, Dahi to Naboo, mm-hmm. uh, Hakru wants to spend... Uh, some time from uh, with Leto learning uh, kind of a few things. First of all, how to use a computer. And secondly, he wants to learn uh, how droids work because Leto got shot at in the last episode and Hakru knows how to fix speeder bikes. He right. knows how to fix Dodd. But he actually likes Lado, and wants to make sure that he can fix Lado sure. in case the worst happens. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, he well, let's see if he's yeah, he's totally on board with that. Um, so it's it's not much. I don't think he got hit. Did he get hit? He didn't know. get hit. He just got shot at, and that oh. was enough to piss off a crew. Yeah, this Lado is a crew's best friend. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I think use uh, really use computer um, check DC fifteen. Okay, let's see. Um, do I have to be trained and use computer? Because I am not. It's like a gather information thing here. Let's see. Using the hollow net to find stuff. Use sensors. I kind of like view this as like, you know, when you're teaching your kid how to look something up on the internet, that's what Leto is doing. And he's yeah. like, here, read this page. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Where to go? Yeah. Access information requires computer aptitude of indifferent or better. That's fine. I don't think. It's not trained only. You can do it. Yeah. Awesome. Headache. Because yeah, it, it's it's you, you, as an IT professional, it's like no, you have to be trained in how to use computers. Well, yeah. you know, Grandma can look stuff up on the internet, yeah. uh, and right. it's a DC, yeah, DC fifteen takes a minute. Uh, does Lado want to help me? Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm literally at plus two. thirteen. He get a plus two. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going through schematics, and he says, "No, that's not me. That's me." And pulls up his entire schematics of, of, of himself. Like he's like a crew is straight up doing the hunt and peck. Just, yep. Um, so yeah, you you get all of his schematics and also it comes with all of his open slots. So it lets you know that you can modify him and upgrade him and all that stuff, which may not have occurred to her crew that you could basically no. m- increase his skills and everything. So, because to a crew, Leto's a person. Right. I can't upgrade Dodd, you know. <laughs> but le- level-wise, you guys are upgrading yourself. He knows so. nothing about cybernetics. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you guys uh, work together for a little bit, and he, he eventually wanders off to go check around stuff. Um, and there's a, a hard wipe, and he's floating around um, the cargo bay, um, kind of talking to himself. Um, muttering a little bit, uh, old man muttering, and uh, he's floating by um, the um, med capsule, and he stops and he kind of turns back toward it and does like a little scan, and uh, he says, extends a little arm, little thing comes out and turns the device on, and it starts warming up, and little arms come down and start spraying back to on the the individual inside. And then he turns around and floats off. So hard wipe back to you guys landing on Naboo. And uh, there's... Us forgetting to turn that on is so on character. (laughs) Like, 
it's like I understand. I'm sorry for breaking the immersion here. That's right. I understand that, like, oh, this is a fun little way of how we're going to introduce Mary and how she finally wakes up. No, no, literally, Jad never told us it wasn't on. Yep. No one would think to check. Yeah, and we just went. <laughs> it was in it was in stabilized mode, so she was just like sort of put in um, suspended animation. Yeah, like d- does Lash even know we had it? I don't know. Kind of what? Sh- How I'm much sh- time does Lash spend in the cargo bay? Not much. Yeah. But so I th- Lash, I think, is the only person who would think to actually check on this and has no idea we have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I, uh, nah, I have to go check on something real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, so you guys land on Naboo, and the person comes out, and they're all elaborately dressed and everything. It's a, It's beautiful scenery, and... They bring over the cargo and, and hold out a little data pad and Dodd puts his thumb on it. And you guys are putting this stuff up in the in the ship and uh, the ship takes off and heads into hyperspace again. Uh, and I believe we have one, two, two more days. Um, before before we leave, do they? Uh, how long does it take for them to load this? Enough time for Flash to run to a shop and purchase some fancy duds for Dodd? Uh, yeah, you can have them wait. It takes a crew begs to go with. It takes about five hours for them to yeah, you, to get everything together and landing and all that good stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, so What's- a crew and Lash and we'll we'll go see if Dodd wants any part of this. Uh, we're gonna go into town. Um, Dodd's still healing, so I doubt he wants to go. I'm uh, heading in uh, with you guys. I'm going to pick up some fresh veg. <laughs> okay. Did I put on Dodd's sheet how much his clothes cost? That was oh, something we're going to buy fancy. Come. Latch can't, can't handle that that grungy swashbuckling shit that he's been wearing. Right. Um, <laughs> she's a little more fancy than that and uh, wants to see what Dodd looks like in some proper uh, apparel. So she's right. going to buy him like. Naboo would be the place to find that too. Hell yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And there is in that wiki uh, on one page, I think it's under like travel items or travel equipment. Like in the um, comments, someone put in like, okay, here's common clothes cost this, work clothes cost this, and I just have to find it real quick. Um, er, equipment. It's literally at the bottom. It's not even something you can search through. So my, my original outfit, business clothes, 75 credits. Right. So. And that's where I found that. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Somebody put that in there. And then... Yeah, so so L- Lash with her own money, just because she's like that, she is going to uh, purchase Dodd some fancy duds and then some normal, you know, swashbucklery clothes. But she's not going to give those to him yet. The <laughs> <laughs> crew is just looking around. He has never seen a planet so vibrant with so much water. Yeah, that isn't trying to kill you constantly. <laughs> We were just on a planet that wasn't trying to kill Haku constantly. <laughs> but it was very that was a huge step up. Yeah, but it was a very gray and kind of basic planet. So yeah, but it was paradise for crew. Okay, like he's his mind is blown right now. <laughs> Gosh, guys, have any of you ever actually been to Dathomir? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's <in> swamps. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just rock. It's hate rock. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's just going around. He's just really excited, um, and the people are all super nice, and it's very, it's very nice. That's all I can say about he, it. He uh, and a crew wants to buy a new like settling torch for uh, uh, for Lado. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all in the droid book. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll find it. I've got, survival. I've got the money. Yeah, survival gear. I think it's under. Come on, baby. I just love nope. that this clothing list of prices comes from the West End Star Wars game. Yeah, did you find it on the wiki? Yeah, it, it's That's in, great. It's general equipment at the very bottom in a comment. There and it just go. says, yeah, it came from came from the WEG. Which there is it is. Yeah. 
That's great. Yeah, that's your bucket of six sided dice. Yeah. 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 So former oh. former clothes are a hundred. Um, local uniforms one hundred and fifty. Flame proof suits two hundred. Sub zero Parker two fifty. A uh, wetsuits four hundred. And a chronometer watch is twenty five credits. So how much is it going to cost Lash to buy him? Like, uh, what would on any other planet be passed off as royal regalia? Like, uh, like a purple, gold trimmed robe. And uh, uh, you know, like some fancy boots and and uh, uh, yeah, something like that. Like like it's not actually royal, but uh, not royal on Naboo, but you know, up past most planet standard. Right. Uh, we're gonna say formal formal clothes is the starting hundred credits. You can mm-hmm. spend anywhere up from there. Okay, so if you so want to spend five hundred on it, you can, and it can yeah. be whatever you want. So. Okay, she'll she'll spend a total of five hundred for the fancy clothes, and then you know a set of regular clothes. So okay, uh, yeah, he's got casual clothes on right now, or he's got business clothes on. So you can buy formal clothes, and that would be like a, a suit, maybe a vest, um, that sort of okay. thing. Yeah, so we'll do that, and then like something crazy fancy. Okay, they have it. A crew, a crew buys a fusion cutter. <laughs> How much were those? I think that's the name of the episode. They are, three, they are 500. They are three. Cre- they are uh, they are 500 credits. They are th- uh, three kilograms, and they can be installed in a droid. There you go. Droid fusion cutter. Okay. Yep. They deal one d eight of energy jet damage, uh, or can be used as a bludgeoning weapon, dealing one d four. Okay. They greatly increase aid in repairing starships, heavy vehicles. And uh, improvising weapons. There you go. Um, she is also going to. Lashara is also going to pick out um, uh, a couple items for Hakru and for Jad. Okay. Uh, since they don't typically buy that kind of stuff, and she's just in a giving mood, uh, she has she has a reason why. She'll just explain later. Okay. Yeah, you guys can literally buy anything you need to, unless it's like licensed or restricted. So, yeah, this is a fusion cutter is a common thing. Yeah. It's a heavy duty thing, but it's common. Right. Yeah. So if any, anyone else wants to buy anything or sell anything off, um, they're more than welcome to. I think I will take your uh, advice from earlier and sell my energy cells. Yeah. I don't think they're a whole lot. They're 10. No, yeah, 10. <clears throat> and four power power packs, I think, or they're 25. And I think that's what you use for everything. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure you have enough on your bow caster because I want to say it's like 30 shots and that thing's depleted. Yeah, so I'm, I'll buy three of those. Okay. So. Yup, yup, yup. Anyone so else? I'm going to spend uh, 600 credits in total on all the clothes I'm buying. She okay. also is going to uh, pick up a shirt for Nanat that is just a, a um, screen printed t shirt that says Naboo. Okay. <laughs> uh, it says I heart Naboo. Oh, yeah, I heart Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> um, sounds good. Uh, anything else anybody wants to do on Naboo? <laughs> They have lots of local food, great food. Um, so Nanat goes out and gets a lot of fresh food for the pantries and everything. I'll uh, I'll spring for a big meal for leaving uh, leaving Naboo. Okay. For everybody, like uh, I don't think uh, that's go very down much. to Little Italy in Naboo and pick something up for everybody. Service is inexpensive. I don't think it's dining per meal. If you want to do luxurious, it's 150. Upscales 50. Average is 10. Oh, oh, let's do uh, let's do 150. Yeah, that's what Nanat's buying. At least a week of uh, luxurious food for everybody. Did you send out those character sheets that you modified? I did not. They're on the the wiki for now. I wanted to go over everyone's money and everything, but since we're spending. Might as well yeah. do it at the end and just update everybody. 
Yep, I will uh, change it on my sheet. Because I thought some people had money already, plus the 2500 you guys got the other last session. So I don't know if some got spent in the meantime. I just want to make sure you guys are all up to date. Yeah, nothing crazy happens on the booth. It's just an average day. The weather's beautiful. Um, no random encounters. No elephant stampedes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> elephant fleas. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. All right. It's five hours. You guys got plenty of time to do whatever you need to do. Nanak comes back with um, two crates of food and puts them on board. Uh, I don't think there's any damage to the ship left over. You guys fixed all that. Mm -hmm. So that's there's nothing to do there. Hmm. Uh, Nanat asks about, asks some, some of the locals about how to get some sort of fuel cells for the ship. That way he can buy extra in case you guys are way out, um, in the middle of nowhere and you have, you know, reserves of fuel. An extra storage tank or something. Something like well, that. How much our, our storage capacity though, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. How much? I, I'm going to look this up. I'm going to try to look this up anyway, too. But so right now our hyperdrive is times three. Right. Is there a way to get to like times two and like yeah. cut down on our time? Yeah. And would it? Is it stupid expensive? And is it worth it to wait for that installation? And would it cut down our overall trip? It. I'm going to try to find that out. Um, starship accessories. I think it's a it's a whole thing, but you can reduce your your hyperdrive down. It's a big it's a big replacement repair sort of thing, I believe. I know that's one of the things that can be done Stage via 40. the starship design feat. Yeah. Uh, well. But yeah, again, like there's huge costs. Yeah. And even then, you can only mod ships so much before then you have to go buy a whole new ship right and then you can start modding that yeah hyperdrive system they cost them placement points so you'll have to figure that out um you guys have a class three right now so if you went down to a two i believe that's two thousand as a base um and i think what happens is you have to buy I thought you had to buy the increments, but I could be wrong. Um, but so you can get down to 1.5 for 2,500, but I think you have to, I, I could be wrong. You have to go to two first. I thought so. I thought so. I could be wrong, or at least you have to pay for it. 2.5 is worse than 2.0. No, this is your, this is your modifier. So a class right. three is a times three hyperdrive. If you get onto a two, you're only you're you're it's a lot faster. Yeah. So a point okay. point seven five is five thousand at its base to cost. And the oh. cost is multiplied by the starship's cost factor, which is based oh. on size. True. I could be wrong. Well, that'll be a whole thing we'll have to look up and. Okay. How how big is the ship? It's colossal. I believe it's really cool. small. Okay, so it's really, times five. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so it's base price times five. Yeah. So go one step. I, I I don't quote me on that. I'm not certain, but I thought there okay. was something like that. Like maybe it's, it's on page forty of the Starship's book is uh, yeah. where we start talking about hyperdrive. The best hyperdrive ever created is a point five. It's not possible to install on a class. A, a point five because no manufacturer creates such delicate, unreliable piece of equipment. So yeah, it doesn't say anything about incrementally. You're basically swapping out the whole hyperdrive. Okay. Uh, it's an area class five is very like, difficult, delicate. It's like Mary's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> class one is considered a pinnacle during the clone wars so there also might be a cap on time frame so we'll have to look up um knights of the old republic and see if there's not something about hyperdrive or starships that like 
you may only be able to get to a certain class at a certain time frame. It's all relative, fellas. Yeah. Because so it's, not, it's not something we can do right now. Yeah. I'm sure that there's a considerable time gap that, it, that is involved with the replacement of a hyperdrive to, yeah. as well. Yeah, it's all listed in here, how long yeah. it takes to do these. Yeah. Um, but I think, like like I said, you have the basic ship, so it may have emplacement points available that are just open. So you guys can figure all that out. And, you know, if you want extra okay. guns and stuff, you can do that. If the hyperdrive won't fit, then, you know, that it won't fit. Just to quit. It's only three emplacement points, so I think you guys got a, got a couple. We'll have to figure that out, too. But it's something to start looking at, especially for the people, you know, that like that sort of this sort of stuff that this is your this is your thing um so i thought i saw before that that there are tanks additional power couplings and things like that let's see where is it at accessories cargo pods nothing on fuel of course so i guess we could say yeah they're out there i guess they come in canisters because that's how you would transport something like that i don't know if it's energy or if it's a gas or anything like that so um okay uh and it looks like it's uh 1500 probably times the factor of the ship to put something like that in so that would be i think a little too much for him uh dodd also um her crew finds hears about you uh sort of paying things off and he decides to give you a thousand back uh, from his own money, because uh, mm -hmm. he says it's it's too much. So no, it's it, the, look, that's that's fine. If you want to go that way, that's fine. So are we lifting off planet and getting back on the travel? Yeah. If no one else has anything else to do, then the ship takes off from Naboo easily and slips into hyperspace. Uh, so at at dinner tonight on our. Uh, transportation here um lashara is going to uh try to prepare some recipe that lena uh told her about something kind of fancy with okay. all the goods that came back from uh the knot okay um and jad and uh have kind of a little party and she's okay. gonna uh have a couple of little announcements okay i don't know what that would be to make food uh, survival. Yeah, all right. And if you're taking 10, because there's no sense in hurrying up through this, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just take 10. Um, <laughs> I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's good enough. Um, she tries. Yeah. It tastes good. All the ingredients are, are modifiers on that too, so it's over a twenty. Okay. So everyone has a good meal. It's very uh, filling. Uh, also, Jad, before uh, jump back to the planet, you don't need yeah. your helmet and vest anymore. Your character level has surpassed that. So if okay. you want it for look, you can do that. Or if you want to sell it, you can sell it. No, I'm. Ha I'll hang on to it for look. Okay. Uh, the only time it's going to become a hindrance is once you get to your dexterity maximum modifier, then that okay. will just cap it. So you can dump it then. All right. So after everyone gets settled down uh, with after dinner, Lashar brings out some some uh, uh, gift wrap wrapped boxes and uh, hands one to each character. Um, so she she has hands the first one to uh, to Jad. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Some people. Uh, yeah. Lashara hands a gift wrap box oh. about uh, uh, two foot by three foot kind Ooh. of thing. She hands it over to you. Oh, all right. Well, I'll take it. Then. Uh, is this for, is this for me? Uh, she bows slightly and says, "Yes, this is for you. Don't open it yet." And then oh. she hands one to uh, her crew. <laughs> and she's just just hold on to that her crew hold on to that she has hands one to nanat hands one to dodd 
she says, okay, you'll open them up. And uh, you guys, yeah, just start opening up these packages. And Jad's is this, uh, you know, not terribly fancy, but pretty nice looking um, uh, set of clothes. It's got like a, um, uh, a pocketed vest, like a utility vest and um, a shirt with a collar and then cargo pants um, and um, some little thin little shoes. Um, and then uh, her crew has something a little fairly similar. Um, but uh, he's got like this long sleeved uh, shirt that's a little bit more proper looking and his vest doesn't have pockets or anything. It's just like sleek. Um, and uh, Nanat just has his uh, I Heart Naboo shirt and, <laughs> <laughs> and Dodd has this gaudy as shit purple robe with, with a tie in the middle and like this gold inlay on you know uh, uh, stitching and um, this like lavender collared shirt and black pants. Oh, uh, what is the role for concealing surprise? <laughs> is that persuasion? Uh, deception. 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 Okay. All right. And rolling the deception. Ooh. Uh, 27. So hopefully you don't notice, notice me go. <laughs> right? Um, so she, look, she, go ahead. I'm sorry. I look over at, at Lashar. I said, well, Ash, that's, uh, that's awful kind of you. I, I hope that I have occasion to wear such finery on sometime <laughs> well, soon. So she bows deeply and she says, I appreciate everyone's help. I know I was kind of a mess after that, that big battle at the town and, uh, everyone was there for me to, to help. And this is just to celebrate us being an official crew together. Congratulations to everybody. Um, we're we're all a team now. Um, and she says, thank you so much. Hey, it's no problem. Thanks for the meal. Uh, what I'm is just... this, by the way? <laughs> I'm just thinking in my head. I, I hope they can't read Rodian faces because I went from being super excited. I've never gotten a gift before in my life to that look of child's disappointment getting clothes for Christmas. <laughs> Her crew then, legitimately does not understand what's happening. <laughs> so so she, she looks over at Dodd and uh, she's going to use the force to try to pick up his actual intention just for the shits and giggles. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, sixteen plus fourteen, so she can yeah. roll a thirty. She knows she knows what's up, Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. At and, least she knows and, that I have the well, the the decency to be, you know, well receiving of a gift. Uh, she she like she starts to walk out the room, and then she looks back over her shoulder and says, "I wasn't going to leave you in that. We need to look business, but not that business." And she tosses him another box that's basically just just newer versions of the clothes that he had before and he goes and she says this this is to replace your swiss cheese uh clothes <laughs> well now we're talking i say <laughs> and i hold it up to the light i'm like now this is perfect <laughs> crew's literally looking at this just like holding up each piece individually like he hold, he holds up the vest and just goes what is this? <laughs> Camera pans over and Nanat's got his shirt on and he's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably scary. <laughs> yes. You don't know if he's burying his teeth at you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, got you. Because he's, yeah. <laughs> he's got a lot of teeth and yeah. canines. He's right? a Shistavanen, so yep. smiling and about to kill you. Look about the same. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it really is true. <laughs> Um, that was awesome. So yeah, dinner finishes up. Everyone's got their gifts. Um, we will do a wipe to arriving at Solist, and the ship uh, sets down. I don't even know what Solist is. If it's a water planet or what? No, I think it's uh, volcanic, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I th yeah. I it is. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, the Star Wars Battlefront Two has taught me that. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's where I know it too, I think. <laughs> Which that game has gotten huge again. I don't know if you guys seen all that, but so good. Yeah, EA, EA dropped it for free and uh everyone's just playing the hell out of it now. Hmm. Like where? Where do they drop it for free? Uh oh, yes, yeah. 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 And and PC, like all all the all the versions are you can just grab it. Nice. This brought to you by Sony Entertainment. <laughs> I was so upset with that game when they did when they started the microtransactions. Uh huh. Yeah. You mean at the very beginning? Yeah. <laughs> Before it was released. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's there's plant there's uh, cities and there's a uh, an infrastructure back in the old Republic area, which is kind of what we're looking at. So I'll, uh, I'll check with Nanat on astrogation. Where are we going next? I'm going to look to see if we can't uh, get another job. Okay. Mm. Go ahead and uh, do a used computer roll again. I already did. I have come up with a 30 this time. Oh, I wore the visor, so 32. So if a job is there, hopefully I've found it. I rolled a 16. My use computer is 14. Um, 1,300 is the job. And it's okay. just moving some cargo. Okay. I'll um, let them know where they drop off the cargo. And this will be to Bespin, because it's kind of on the way. Okay. Um, I bet fuel is cheap there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the planet, there's not much to the planet. If anyone wants to do anything, just oh, we'll just kind of... Um, add it in uh, any gear or anything like that you forgot to get on Naboo um, and I guess is someone keeping track of of the cost for the trip and what you're making and everything and sort of equaling that stuff out I have um, it written down right now okay yeah I thought Seth was tracking that and like I think it was like one of those like we the first trip basically paid for our fuel for this trip Mm -hmm. So this second thousand is the first actual profit. Right. And yeah. I was just under the impression that this, these like small or like ferrying things, that was all just going straight into uh ship cost. Okay. Yeah, Unless, that's fine. Th at least that's the way yeah. Hakru was thinking about this. Until someone says, hey, Hakru, go do this. He assumes it's not for him. Yeah. So what was the what was the cost of the or what was the payout on the first one? Three thousand on the first one. Yeah. All right. You said one thousand thirty on this one, right? One thousand three hundred. Yeah. Oh, three hundred. One thousand and thirty credits. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a weird number when I heard it in my head. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for it. I, I, that is a Dodd discount. <laughs> <laughs> I've got us an extra 30 credits on this one. <laughs> so I'm expecting pizza. <laughs> um, so I was, I did some more, I know, I know we're thinking about this stuff, but I did some more reading because on the hyperdrive, because it's right here in front of me. Um, there's no tier. Like you don't have to go to one to the other. You just have to have the points. Okay. And if we replace our class three, that only cost uh, two points. Okay. So we have we currently have five points to spare. Okay. Because I'm assuming it's a stock ship, nothing changed. Right. So if we replace our class three with, we can go with a 1.5, and that would only cost us one emplacement point. Okay. Because an emplacement uh, point yeah. for a class three hyperdrive is two. So... It's you know, so it's yeah it's it's you know, so we gain two and then we lose three, okay. So it can be yeah. done, um, or if we went all the way to a, actually we could go all the way to a one, that just costs a ton of money. Yeah, but I mean we will have the fastest little colossal ship there is. You'll ha we'll have to we'll have to look at the Republic era book, um, the old Republic era book and see if it's even possible to get it up beyond a two. Right, there I, I, I kind of like capped it at like the two, but e either way, we can do 
two 1.5 or one, and it only costs us one placement point. Yeah. And we still have, and even then, they're apparently like you could sacrifice cargo space for upgrades. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's go there. Yeah. Oh, uh, where were we at? We were at the map. How many days has it been so far? Uh, that's what I was... Uh, when you guys reach Bespin, it'll be seven days. Total. All right. Um, so you guys lift off Solus, take off again. One, two, three, four, four days to Bespin. <clears throat> um, let's see. And uh, uh, you guys come out of hyperspace. Bespin's there. There's only one. Um, city in that uh, gas giant and it's a huge city and you guys wind up coming in and landing on one of the uh, uh, landing pads and they're ready for you to uh, offload the gear uh, that was sent uh, who was overseeing all this me okay uh, so you're in the cargo hold and they're um, picking up the stuff doing the thumbprint that sort of thing and they take it out, and you're kind of standing there, um, looking on your pad, trying to find another job in the area. And you hear this gigantic roar coming from inside the cargo hold. And it is not like a roar. It's like a, a huge lion roaring. Okay. Um, Immediately go to a wall panel and uh, tap tap on the all call button. <laughs> Uh, and I say, hey, hey, <laughs> what was that? Roll your dexterity modifier. Dexterity. Yep. So roll d20 okay. plus your modifier. All right. Uh, that's a 12. Okay. No way. I, I actually rolled a 20. Um, my modifier. You're standing really close. You slam your hand on it, and you're like, hey, and the whole ship hears you screaming hey with this loud roar, and it <laughs> reverberates through the whole ship. So you guys are hearing this All right, I reach down and grab my blaster, yeah. and then I repeat the message. Okay, guys. <laughs> what was that? It's coming from inside the cargo bay that you're standing right, in. past me. I'm looking at the door behind me, the ramp, the down ramp, right? Yeah, it's and somewhere I, somewhere off to the side. Like it's somewhere okay. And I'm sure I think you're you would be standing there with your hand on the on the thing. I squinted and one leg up in the air, like yeah. What's my what's my just be cool skill? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a deception, probably. All right, deception. Yeah. deception works. Let me roll that. Hold on. Five. No. Uh, plus, <laughs> plus nine, so th 14. Ooh, that does not make it. Okay. This thing sounds terrifying. Okay. My back is up against the wall, and I've got my gun, and I'm pointing it, and it's shaking. Okay. About that time, uh, Lado comes up the ramp. What's going on? What are you? What, who's making all the noise? All right, I narrowly avoid shooting Lado. <laughs> and he, and yeah. I say, he starts doing <laughs> a scan. Lado, what the hell was that? Hmm. Well, it well, well, he did not do good on that roll. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to assume that this was like a check a section of the trip that Hakru was driving. So he's going to start coming from the, uh, not like quickly, right. but like brisk pace walk, like inside walking. Yep. <laughs> inside quick the, feet. Uh, I push the intercom button again and I say, where are you people? <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to become running 
running toward the cargo bay, okay. uh, praying for a hunt. Okay. <laughs> so what I just kind of see happening is like a crew's like doing a brisk walk from the uh, f- f- from the. Uh, why can't I think of? I want to say pod. Cockpit. That's not it. Cockpit. The cockpit. Thank you. From the cockpit, and then just here comes Jad, just whipping around a corner. Right. Oh. <laughs> About that time, uh, Nanak comes out of his quarters with his his long rifle and is, is running in the same direction. A crew's not armed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's going to take um, it'll take a turn for you guys to get navigate through the ship to the back. Um, and Lido, Lido does another scan and he says, uh, that might be our passenger. That might might be the person who was in the pod. Passenger? Pod? What are you talking about? When we when we uh, discovered that Rodian on that ship, he he brought this pot on board. His trunk. Oh uh, yeah. I like Dodd, he, his, he thought it was just a trophy case. Human right? size, yes, human size uh, steamer trunk, <laughs> coffin. <laughs> yeah, it's we huge. Nice people. Can yeah. you do bio scans? Uh, I'm not getting a lot right now. He's he's sort of looking in that direction. Uh, it's kind of dark over in there, in that side. Uh, right, the I the pod's open, the, and it's kind of kind of messing up my my sensors. I push the button, and I get I get really close to the intercom. It's, it's still behind me. I haven't moved oh. from the wall. Oh, you're pushing the intercom button. I thought you're just pushing yeah. buttons. Beep, 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 I beep, do beep. like to push buttons, but not this. <laughs> I'm pushing that button. Okay. And I get really close to the intercom. The gun's right up against my my forehead and go, Chad, what have you done? <laughs> Lashara. Oh, Lashara. Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> Lashara is in her, uh, her bunk, and when she hears all this going on, she's going to try to go into a trance and see if she could just reach out with the force and feel something. Okay. Roll uh, about the time you, Jad, and uh, Nanat are kind of like pushing each other, it's like who's going to get there first? He looks at you, and goes, "Is this that? Is this that thing you brought on board?" Uh, it might be. Oh, I gotta admit, I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> it it's N- a person, Jad. Nanat stops <laughs> running. Stops running and, and just starts casually walking. <laughs> Uh, so Nanat, uh, Jad, uh, get there. Go ahead and roll, uh, use the force. Uh, I rolled a 17 plus 14. Yeah. <laughs> 31. Yeah. Uh, you do remember the story, uh, from Jad coming on board and, uh, the person who he owes his life to. So you think that's who this is. Okay. He, he had no description of her at all. He was just, it was furry and I put it in the box, that sort of thing. I like how I like how even after, like Dodd gets some recognition, like realizes that this is a human being or not a human being, but a sentient, a sentient being, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, a sentient being that's been released from a pod. He doesn't think to address the sentient no. human being. He wants Jad to answer his right. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, about that time, the door opens. Uh, Lado clicks on a little light and. It kind of illuminates some of the junk that's back there, but you see these two eyes reflecting back, and they're big. Damn it. <laughs> and they're, they're about on level with, the, like, Nanat would be looking at yeah. you. Like, uh, Okay, so I carefully don't exactly point my gun in that direction. I kind of point it up in the air. Like, if I needed to, I could snap it down and shoot. And I said, all right. I don't know who you are or why you're here. You're saying this but in don't, basic? Don't move. Yeah, I'm saying it in basic. Okay. Should I say it in hoodies? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Depends on what, she's, what she can understand. Yeah. Um, are the three of us who were walking or, I guess, jogging there now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. About the time you guys come around the, in the door, you see a light go on and there's these two big, bright, orange eyes crew just walks in because uh, lash used the force yeah yeah and through the force I, um 
you feel you like it's things. it's a it's Sorry. a sentient being that yeah, uh, is kind of scared. Motive type of thing where yeah. you know if it's dark side she'll know yeah. if it's not evil she'll know but then right. it's very very rudimentary. Yeah. A lot of confusion. Not evil, very confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I in the cargo bay at this yes. point? Yeah. You guys have all just right. all walked in on that. All right. I, I'll try again in 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 Huddies. Oh, that's what I was looking up to see what she. Oh, I, speaks. I I speak technically I speak basic, although based on period I'm not sure, but it's rather than trying to learn I a think new so. language. Yeah. So I'm okay. I I want to walk out and just kind of get between everybody and guys. I I don't think it's gonna attack. It saved my life. It. She. She. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this this is what's okay. happening in in real time. He goes, I don't think it's right. going to affect us. And you hear she. <laughs> Why is it she in the books? What? Where am Hold I? On. And who are all the? What happened? All right, one at a time. All right, you're you're on our ship. I put you in this back to tank thing. What about the Shalu? The who? The ship I was on. Well, that's not here anymore. The crew's and just walked up to see the window and has like poked his head in. <laughs> the ship you were on? I put my blaster it's also away. Gone. At this point. Did I manage to kill her? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Thank I'll you. Kind of relax. in there. there. Okay. Where she, am I? And she steps okay, out of the on. shadow, and this is a huge. What color are you? She's gray, like a kind of a Russian blue cat color. Okay. This, okay. like seven foot three, cat looking down gray person steps out of from all the like there's netting and stuff back there to hold stuff up and she kind of comes out of it um and she's got oh, like i a, thought she was still inside the tank new. and she's oh, got a, okay. a portion of her that's uh i guess it's up here it's burned fur yeah, basically like right through the like a long something that would have been serious enough to yeah. drop her pretty quick yeah and she's got sort of dried blood in, in her fur up here but it's all healed up too um, okay. She looks a little disoriented, but she keeps looking at Jad when she's talking. Right. Okay. Everybody. Who's still like right up there. I feel like, like we're going to need some invading person Jad. space. <laughs> and you, new person, what do I call you? My name is, I'm Rura. Who the hell are you people? You can call me Dodd. Let's, um, let's all go upstairs and sit around a table and discuss this with a few less blasters and a little bit more manners. What do you guys think? Come on. She doesn't have a blaster. You just look down and see these huge, sharpened, deadly-looking paws, claws. Are you are you flexing them right now? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're kind of out, like, yeah. instinctively. Like, she's, like, okay. kind of in a corner. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Look. <laughs> I promise you, no one's going to hurt you. I put my blaster away. Jad, put your blaster away. Oh, I didn't even remember I had it out. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Jad. <laughs> Let's go upstairs and find out you what's going thin. on and get to the bottom of this. And uh, there's food. Lashara, what do you think? I'm not Lashara's in there. not there. Nope. No. Yeah. Push the button. Lashara, I need a meal. Please. Um, she she says, uh, "Will our new friend be joining us?" Yeah, I'm guessing something with meat. <laughs> I'll be in the mess hall. Thank you. Or what? What do we? Where do we even eat on this ship? I've been looking at the diagram, yeah. and there's like, I guess it's like the main hold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in. I'll be in the hold. Yeah, there's a little. Um... Number three, I guess. Yeah. On the diagram. Yeah. Little kitchenette. Like the common area. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I start. Uh, I start kind of walking like I'm going to go up the stairs, and I look impatiently behind me for anybody who's not following. So, when you guys come around the corner, 
from if you're going from seven to three and 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 lash is coming out uh from her bunk which is over nine i think uh she sees this huge cat and this is why i was so excited for this day (laughs) her hackles raise and lash just instinctively gives a snarl a bothan ridiculous <laughs> snarl now hold on a second her, her fur oh, her, the crew's just oblivious she's just going <laughs> so where are you from do you how do you know jed yeah. are you same as captain the nut <laughs> like he, it's just these little kid questions just yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of would-be people with these giant canines on board this ship. I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed this. <laughs> yeah. add, add another set of claws and fangs. Yep. Right. Um. Like between between the Bothan and the Sivanestian, yep. or whatever the heck you are. Shistavanan. Yep. Yeah, Shistavanan. I'm pretty sure that when, when Jad opens up that whatever that m- mouth that Rodians have, oh, there's, there's probably there. these giant yeah, yeah, fangs. I mean, yeah, there's fangs in there. He's, he's got a tube. He's a rodian. It's a, yeah. it's a proboscis. He has a yeah. honker. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You give him a little squeeze, he goes, ha ha! Uh-huh. Okay. Super head. Yeah, at the, at the sound of, of snarling, you, you almost hear, like, almost an involuntary growling sound coming from the very back of the line. As yeah. <laughs> hey. She didn't let anybody walk behind her, but... Yeah. Manners. Yeah. Manners. And with that, Nanak kind of rolls his eyes and walks to the, toward the cockpit. Slings, <laughs> I, slings I his gun see, over his shoulder. I see Nanak doesn't have much to say about any of this. No. Okay. All right. I'm going to sit down in my usual place, wherever the heck that is at that table. I'm going to kick my legs up and uh, wait for everybody else to kind of assemble around the table. Okay. And unless, unless somebody says anything else, I'm just going to say, okay, story time. <laughs> while you're while you're telling the story, Lash is over there cooking food, and she's slopping it together like she's <laughs> and she keeps like looking over her shoulder and getting this like she's not completely indignant, but she's not happy. Nice. <laughs> and I'll just say, but well, you guys know I told you the story how you know I was I was framed for murder, and you know I was in a cell, and they're gonna kill me, and somebody saved me, and I got off the ship. You're not well, great at reading cat expressions, but while he's saying that, like that, I I'm looking over at him like, what? What is he talking about? Because <laughs> that half of the story she didn't know. Wait, am I, I misremembering everything? I'm no, I, I don't know here. your I don't know your story. Like you're talking oh, oh, about okay, being yeah. framed for right. murder, and I'm like, yeah. I, what? <laughs> I, I'm I, going to go save food from Flash. Uh, I would. Uh, I look up at you and I, I say, "Crew, good call." <laughs> and, then, and then I'll just say, you know, so this is who saved me, and uh, I thought it was only right to save her. But other than that, I don't know who she is. Oh, good. And here she is. Yep. Yeah. Lash says, "Who are you?" <laughs> The crew just comes over and just kind of like almost like shoes you out of the kitchen. Like, you too mad, you too mad. Go away, go away. <laughs> Food is labor of love. There is no love in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I don't know. She looks over at um, Lashara. No. No. That's character's name Jed. is Jed. 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 Okay. Jed. Sorry. I haven't been here. Um, how long has it been oh i don't even know how long it's been two months four months eight months ten months you know, it's probably probably like a month or so yeah i think it's probably about a month month maybe a month right. and a half well here, here's the thing it took us like two weeks to drop off the ore mm-hmm and probably closer to two or three months because we had some adventures before we all yeah, we, we were together before yeah we were on that we were on we, we we've spent like two weeks on planet total there was a yeah. there were two weeks taking care of the ore stuff and then there was um whatever time it took from picking uh yeah. jad up 
to then picking up Lash to then getting to Dahi. So, right. it, yeah, it might be two or three. Uh, I'm going to call it and say a month and a half. Nothing right. crazy. Cool. Okay. It's a month and a half then. Six weeks. Yeah. And and nobody else got off got off the ship. No. Just us. I did get all the cargo though. Sorry, we already spent all that money though. I don't even. Okay. Um. Well. All right. So Lash turns around and says, "Is there somewhere you need to go? Somewhere you need to be? Somewhere on a different ship, maybe that you should go to?" You know, Lash, I'm picking up a little bit of the discomforts coming from you. Um, somebody want to break this down for me so that I understand what the problem is here? I mean, okay, you got Dad, who's notoriously verbose about everything. We've got uh, Lash, who is notoriously cruel and short-tempered with everyone. And then we've got this welcome guest on our ship. That is heavy sarcasm, folks. <laughs> I'd say that's not Lash. <laughs> this is new. This is a new Lash. Ne neither is uh, is Jad particularly verbose. Right. So no. I, I think the only one acting in character is a crew who is just avoiding conflict and making food <laughs> and oblivious to what's happening. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rur keeps like, like whenever Lash keeps making these comments or or sideways comments, she kind of like glares over for a second and then decides to ignore. Um, okay, look, I was, I was a stowaway on, on, oh God, my uncle's ship. Uh, shit happened. I don't know. I don't have any. Where are we? We're in deep space. Actually, we're landing on Bespin. We're on Bespin. Yeah, you just landed on Bespin. Yeah, yeah let me retract those. Is. None of that of... makes Does yeah. anybody know where we are in relation to Doria? The person who would know that has just gone back to the bridge. But before has, we address have that. Have they heard of Tagoria? <laughs> <laughs> Crickets. Uh, the droid pops in, which, uh, if you don't speak basic, it's just uh, beeps and whistles. But for everyone else, it's uh, um, an older uh, southern man, um, uh, Slim Pickens, basically. And he says, uh, "Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of Tagoria. It's it's, it's quite a ways, ways away." And he pops off the the coordinates, and everyone sitting around goes, "Okay." <laughs> Just numbers uh, to me. Yeah, so it'd be a uh, galactic knowledge lore or whatever galactic lore would be if you wanted to see if you've heard of it. So I'm, I'm just going to make this up, but Lashara says, I know all about Tagora. <laughs> the Bothans and the Tagorans, we've never quite got along. This is an ancient feud, and <laughs> I'm not going to do anything to fix it. Is this a Bill Murray proxy? <laughs> is this what's going on here? Dogs and cats living together with mass hysteria. But it's me. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what this is. Okay. Uh, you'd have to look on the map to see if you could find Tagori. Did I? I did not put Tagori. I've been looking and I don't see it, but that's no, okay. It's not a, like, it's in P9. Very... I say if you find oh, Kashyyyk like, and go directly north, that's where it is. Kashyyyk, P9, P9. This is a real thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a real thing. They just okay. don't have their own... They never developed their own space flight. The only reason they got off-world is because of Mandalorians. Oh, you they're not. Yeah. So you're basically an Ewok of enormous size? <laughs> uh, closer to Wookiee, really. Yep, yeah, it's P9. Oh, yeah, Tagoria. Tagoria, Tagoria's like right on a major... The hyperspace yeah. lane. Right. Yeah. Oh. So a lot of people have probably heard of her heard of them. But they don't allow off worlders on planet. Right. Yes, that I read real quick. That's how I discovered P9. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so nobody that... ever goes there. The only ones you see are the ones that leave for whatever reason. Right. 
So we we Up probably pick that up later in conversation. For now, let's get to the bottom. Right, that's the why you're here. And okay, real quick while you're talking, this is when Hakru brings food over. Uh, my because it's survival to cook, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, twenty four total. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I, I real quick, uh, the sleeping con- situation. Who's in ten? And who I know, uh, Dodd and Hakru are in nine. That would have been Jad and Lash in 10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And then there's oh. that center room that... that uh, That's the captain's. Yeah, that was the medical bay-esque sort of right. extra room. Yeah, four was the med bay. Two was the captain's quarter. That's where uh, yeah. Nanat was sleeping. Um, Step two, put a hole in the box. Exactly. Oh my god. Uh, but I mean like we have two free beds, so like yeah. she can crash wherever. As long Except as... in ten. <laughs> <laughs> we got a free bed over in nine. <laughs> is eleven okay. the bathroom? Uh the, the bathroom pressure. is outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Star Wars. Yeah, technically yeah, eleven Star is Wars. just a storage room. Uh yeah. So let me let me try this out. Rura, 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 rura. Okay, rura. First off, I guess thank you for being a guest on our ship, Jad. <laughs> well, second, I had to, well I had to let her wake up so I could say uh, thanks for saving me. Oh. I was asleep for a month and a half. How long was she supposed to be asleep, Jad? Um, I don't know how long back that works. Why were I just you, know it works. <laughs> why were you asleep in the first place, Rora? Because somebody shot me through the lung. Oh. I have a little experience and with that. And I look around and she, she touches. She reaches the for the top of an ear that's now missing. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's something? Check this. <laughs> Uh, so, thinks, oh, we're showing off scars. Just unzipped his yeah. jumpsuit, and you just see like it's more scar <laughs> than skin. I was going to say, I think Hakru is just a walking scar, right? Yeah. Um, He's been the, physically ripped apart and put back together by the force. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. About, Dad, maybe this is not my place to speak on this, but I feel like you maybe should have mentioned to us that you brought a sentient being in storage on board our ship a month and a half ago. Did it just not come up? Uh, I didn't know a good way to bring that up. It, you know, <laughs> how are you going to bring up that I, you know, hey, I, I, I brought a stowaway aboard. Yeah. Well, what, I want to do that. What was your plan, Dodd or uh, Jad? <laughs> uh, make sure she is okay, and before she woke up, leave her on a planet. Wonderful. I mean, wait, did I say that out loud? Planet, but this is kind of a gas giant. I don't know that stranding a person here is really the right call. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, we've got a partnership here on this ship. What kind of skills do you have that you can offer to us to, to uh, help us out around here while we're, while we're in space for the time being? Honestly, I don't know. This is the first time I've ever been off of my planet. Okay. My life to this point has been gardening and watching cubs. Never garden or watch cub, but first time off planet for me too. I show her. She helped me. (laughs) Where's the intercom button? This is my favorite button on the ship. I'm glad there's a lot of them. This is Dodd to Nanat. Uh, Nanat's here. Sorry. What's our next destination? Oh, where we go. That is another page. Hang on. I assume as we go further out, we're getting to more and more sparse job opportunities, right? Yes. Okay. The next major planets are. It would not be indoor because it's indoor is not really even known. Right, about. I was thinking There's, it would be yeah. uh, 
Trenwith? Uh, uh, oh, actually, Ser- uh, Seria. Yeah, Seria would be our next big fork, and then that would take us to Bakaru, and then we're yeah in wild space. B- Bakura is a pretty well civilized planet. Yeah, Bakura. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's so, that's the that's the last stop. He was going to try and, and go straight through to that. Okay, let me see if I can arrange something for Bakura. Um, talk amongst yourselves, guys. Uh, Leto pop, pipes in and says, uh, How do you like food? <laughs> oh, food. I haven't eaten, apparently, in a month and a half. Thank you. You very thin. <laughs> 23. Down just like, shrug. Yes, I am. You know, like, okay. Lash, Lash just, like, kind of scowls and leaves the room. <laughs> she doesn't know why she doesn't like this cat person, but she's just... You didn't eat! Uh, no, she's just going to her quarters. Rura just kind of keeps, again, like, kind of glancing over at her and then, like, doing that, I'm going to ignore it because I don't know what's happening and I don't like it. <laughs> so so what I, what I picture, what I've been picturing for weeks now is that there's no real thing here except, okay. like... On uh, uh, Tagora, they make jokes, and Bothans are the butt of it. And it's opposite on Bothwai. They they make jokes, and the Tagorans are the butt of the joke. And it's just that's just how it is, and it's always been that way. It's like Missouri and Hoosier. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was going to say Arkansas, but okay. So I wasn't. I don't know, but it may be a thing where she's not familiar with that trope. Which, which is kind of why it works perfectly, because like here, in, like Missouri and everything, we use Hoosier all the time right. to like you know describe, you know, basically a you know a, a, podunk a, a, redneck. a dead people, yeah, yeah. Podunk redneck. But if you go over into Indiana, they have no idea that it's bad. It's actually a compliment there. They're right. like, oh yeah, I'm a Hoosier. What's up? So that's where I'm saying like it's like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So Lash Lash isn't really that mean. It's kind of just a thing. <laughs> it was the most poisonous I've seen her act. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody's Everybody. confused. <laughs> yeah. um, Perfect. Yeah. And Rura just thinks that's how she is. And okay, well, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> yep. Dad, I think, is smartly wanting to stay the hell out of that battle. <laughs> but he, he does want to know kind of what it is, what your intentions are now that you're several parsecs away from your home territory and we're needing to leave pretty soon i rolled a 22 to find a new job by the way okay all right and you find uh, a job for five thousand going straight out there and it's to banna gas so you're gonna have these huge <laughs> oh, huge canisters that are going to take up um both cargo bays okay a shot. i check with uh i check with with uh, Nanat. Nanat, you have any problem with transporting uh, Tabana gas? We're going to have to take it easy on the bumps. Oh, we should be fine. Order it up. Two large canisters, 5,000 credits to be received. Make the arrangements. And uh, then I come back to the table and uh, I sit down and are you going to eat all of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she pauses and you see the well, I think I was like she was. You you get the intent, like the impression that, well, she was planning on it, but you know. No, I was no, kidding. No. Just go ahead. You you have your own plate. I do. I do. <laughs> Look, there's more in the can, kitchen if you need more. We can take you as far as Bakura. Uh, I can't make any guarantees beyond that. Is that an adequate destination for you? Because that's where we're at. It. Otherwise, there's a big spaceport out there. Well, not a very big spaceport, but you might be able to find a lift to wherever it is you need to go. Um, Your home planet, I've never heard of it, so I have no idea how far it is. I can at least guarantee your safety uh, as it relates to our own safety to Baccarat. That's what I can offer. Were you really kidnapped? I say. (laughs) (laughs) Kidnapped? No. No. Okay, so you willingly got into a stasis pod. No. And had Jad plug it into our ship. 
Okay, no, that part I was unaware of. Look, all I wanted to do was get off world. I sewed away on my uncle's ship and and then and she kind of like trails off for a second and then she's like and th there was a fight. There were I think everybody died. I know he did. I know Look, all I remember is chasing down this bitch of a Cathar who killed him, shot me, and he, and she points at Jad, was the last living thing I was aware of. And if my eyes can get any bigger, they do. <laughs> you okay. were in the box he was sitting on, on that really, f uh, what is word? Um... <laughs> Decimated ship. Yeah, they they crunched each other. Yeah, the captain rammed. Okay. Look, yes. this I did seem not know you. Were, I'm in that cargo space all the time. It was forbidden box. That's all I knew. I just thought it was trophies, Jad. I thought you just hauled around your trophies, man. No, no. I, I was just trying to do the right thing. Okay. She I did mean, save I, my life. Yeah. Yeah, that. I think I Tell did. Tell me more about how you saved Jad's life. I'd like to hear that. Oh, he was going to get shot sitting in a cage, a locked cage. Okay. The bitch had and no honor. I shot her before she could kill him. Okay, note to self honor is important to Aurora. Uh, all right. Look. That's what's on the table, Aurora. What would you prefer? My whole plan was to get off world and to see something besides a garden. I don't have anywhere I want to go or anywhere specific to be. But it already cost me this much. I don't want to go home. Understood. We're going to Bakura. Let's load up that Tabana gas mine and get underway. Dad, I got to I got to tell you, Dad, I got to tell you. I can't I can't I can't sit back now. Now that she's awake, we got to keep we I I owe her everything, so uh I think we need to give her a shot here. Shoot what? What? Say what? It, but... Right. <laughs> oh, oh. What what are we shooting? No, 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 no. Not no, no, no. How crew not shooting. Get, let's keep her on board. Show her around. Yes, she's going to help me. That was decided long ago. Yeah. You you both have saved each other's life, so you both have this circle cycle that is uh, that's part of your destiny. <clears throat> Lost my mic there for a second. Sorry, guys. That's all right. <clears throat> so at this point um, in time, okay. sorry, real quick, Hakru's finished. He's finished eating. He's going to take his plate back to where it goes, grab Lash's plate, and go take it to her quarters where he thinks she is. <laughs> Man, a crew for being kind of a sociopath is all heart. <laughs> um, <it's> a... <laughs> oh, it's like an 80s sitcom where the surly guy is like, you know, oh, yeah. man. Mr. T is the I was just dinner. thinking that Mr. T is <laughs> okay. Be so a breakfast. Yeah. Here's your food. Her crew <laughs> has been yeah. nothing but like kind and naive <laughs> to everyone until all until the like everyone's like, oh hey, we gotta go kill some people. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's very the emotional. Is just the weight the weight of killing a person and the weight of delivering dinner are equal <laughs> in his it's, mind. It's as simple <laughs> as it's as simple as I pity the Tagore. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so Jad just said, <sighs> Jad just said, um, look, man, I really think we need to give her a shot here. She saved my life. I owe her a great deal. And I look at him, kind of incredulous at first, and then I kind of back off a little bit, and I said, okay, Jad, but she's your responsibility. And she, actually she she holds up a phone. She's like, "Don't, don't, don't put anybody in charge of my life. It doesn't end well for them." He's not in charge of your life. He's just responsible for what you no. do while you're on this ship. So if you blow up something, you hurt something, you damage something, it becomes Jad's problem. That's how it works. 
I can live with that. All right. Meanwhile, uh, please make yourself at home. Make yourself useful. Welcome aboard the whatever we do. Razorback, what are we called? The Ripper. Ripper, that's it. The Ripper. So let's do this. Uh, A crew. I could probably use a hand getting these... uh, getting these uh, Tabana gas canisters. Her crew has already gotten up and gone yeah. to go bring Lash food. Yeah. Are you telling the whole you dynamic. outside of earshot? <laughs> he, he pushes a button on the wall. Bing. But, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you, you catch a, you need something. I mean, I can help. Yeah, she's stand, hulking over you guys. Right. I look up at her and go, yeah, maybe you could be some assistance. <laughs> All right. Come with me. Okay. And we go down to down to the ramp. Also, so we we'll, have that lift. Like you can right. literally cart the shit. <laughs> yeah, I know it is for the movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cut to a sequence of her moving these things in, super easy, setting them down. And, is Tabana, sta- is Tabana sta- guess super right. volatile? I have no idea. I made okay. that up. I don't, I don't know. Because <laughs> I was wondering about that. I'm like, but it's the stuff that they use for. To, to to create a blaster reaction, right? Yeah, is it Tabana? Well, yeah. it fuels it fuels hyperspace engines. If yeah, you, they they use it for everything. That's why Bespin is became yeah, such a rich colony yeah. because like they you it they, it it makes your blaster. It they use it as uh, fuel for cannons. They use its fuel to actually move the ship. Hyperspace fuel in its raw form. It's very. It, it's very explosive. It's almost like, um, like Peter. hydrogen. Yeah, not not hydrogen. But what? Well, there's Nitric a very, and it gives you a psychedelic effect if you huff it. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Are you thinking of nitroglycerin? Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but not even then. Nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin is refined. So yeah. this is like unrefined nitroglycerin. It's yeah. less stable. Yeah. I feel like we're throwing some dispersions on something we don't yeah. know anything about. Yeah, it says once processed, like Tabana can be suspended into a block of frozen, super strong carbonite and safely transported on a repulsor sled. So, okay. is that what we're transporting? <laughs> yeah, are we doing the unrefined or the refined? Do you remember the game master saying tanks? <laughs> uh, Form of Tabana's interstellar gas is highly sought after for hyperscape uh, space scouts. Uh, it doesn't say anything about. Oh, it is highly reactive. Tabana gas made quite explosive, in fact. Uh, let's see if they're refining. I would assume they were to refine it because that would. Yeah, the question is: it, is it refined or is it inert? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's refined. Work for it if it's refined. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna charge way more to haul that shit if it's unrefined. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we, it's like, honestly, it's like, oh, 5,000. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, we're 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 taking the dangerous job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, All right. So no, but it's, it's highly lucrative for right. sure. Right. While Rora and I are moving these things, it gives uh, everybody else a chance to talk without Rora being there. So yep. that was kind of the idea. So uh, I guess her crew is now at Lash's door, knocks, and just kind of like, uh, I, I brought you your plate. You, you did indeed. It is important to eat. And she's like back to her normal self. She's like, oh, th- thank you, her crew. Uh, I- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. And she like takes her from them and starts eating. She's like, oh, that's that's very delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Why were you so upset? Uh, I, I don't know. The uh, the Tagorans. I mean, they're Tagorans, her crew. Tagorans. Blank face. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's all she offers. That's all she's got. <laughs> did uh, did she do something to you? She's a Tagoran. And then she like turns around and goes and sits on her bed and eats her food. <laughs> it's like the Captain Kirk response to Klingons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are Klingons. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> well, it sounds like she will... Uh, <clears throat> God. Switched accents there. <laughs> it sounds like she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere blue. <laughs> we'll, uh, 
God, oh, God, fuck, now I can't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> A little Captain Kirk messes everybody up. Damn it, it's all I can <laughs> think. <laughs> it's all that's coming out of my brain. I'm going to have to, like, pull up a quick thing over here to listen to something else so I can get the accent back right. But for now, well, it sounds like she's going to be here for a little while. Um, are you going to uh, stay in your room the, the whole time? Are you going to bring me my food the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Like, it can be arranged. <laughs> Like, it, we'll we'll see. Thank you, her crew. <laughs> her presence, her presence should not be your uh, your imprisonment. You're right. <laughs> and um, as of now, she has not done anything to you. And I sounds like all of her family not around. She she like looks right at your eyes. And like leans her head down a little bit, and she says, "Togorin, <laughs> foreign word." <laughs> she throws her hands up. She understands that you're not going to get it. <laughs> I I think I think I'm, I'm going to go along. When, when you do that, and when, sorry, real quick, when you do that, and walk away, it's like. I have grown to tolerate your arts that mimic that of the sisters. You can grow to tolerate her. And with that, he walks out. <laughs> and he, she just says, we'll see. <laughs> I, I think that, um, I think that the problem here is that, is that Rora has, I think, I think we can, we, like, I like the idea that Bothan is used as kind of a curse or an insult, but she doesn't. <laughs> Bothan is like it's just a disconnected word. She doesn't even know that he she is a Bothan. Exactly, so that's why she's confused. But that still makes kind of more sense. So. <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay. Um, phew, that was a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a lot of RP going on in this one. No shit. So uh, do a little cut scene. The Tabana's loaded on. Yeah. Uh, Tabana's loaded on. And uh, you guys are ready to go. No, no. It says we can take off any time. Does anybody have any business left over on, on Bespin? Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, could Hakru get the sniper blaster rifle here? Hmm. Is it restricted or anything? Uh, I think it's military. Oof. I had it pulled up, but then I took the sheet away. Shoot. What was it called again? Uh, have, no, God, I have it. Sniper blaster rifle. It's either licensed or military. I can't remember which one. I'll have it here in just a second. Sniper. If you can't find it here, there's a, probably a better chance of finding it at, at uh, Bakura. Bakura, yeah. Because they're a, they're a monarchy. Yeah, it so, is military. Yeah, that's why I'm just asking. So let's see. Military. Let's look at that. I think that requires. Primarily sold to legitimate police and military organizations. Military rating essentially is uh, the same as restricted, except that manufacturers and dealers aren't are generally under tight government scrutiny and therefore especially wary of selling to private individuals. Um, so you have two avenues to this. Military, if you try to get a military license fee, uh, it's 20% of the cost gets added on. If you want to do black market, uh, it would be times four the cost. Okay, let me do some quick math here. And it would take five days to get. Either way. Five days to get. Uh, we don't have five days. Right. The, the second you, like, like the crew's like counting money, and then you say five days, he goes, oh, well, never mind. Yeah, and this would take <laughs> a um, knowledge bureaucracy check to get through all this, and it looks like the military is a DC-20. 
he wouldn't even know that. He would okay. literally go up to someone like he sees right. selling guns or like an arms dealer, right. ask the question, and then either they kind of like, like, yeah, like five days. Oh, I don't yeah. have that time. Goodbye. And yeah. leaves. Uh, if you want to bribe an official, make a persuasion check instead of bureaucracy. If you want to fabricate a false ID and steal another person's identity, make a deception check. Uh, if either of these checks fails by five or more, the authorities are alerted to your activities. So, I don't think anybody has a bureaucracy knowledge check. No. But, that might be something that you guys can do on en route to the other, the next destination. So, if Dodd wants to make that persuasion roll or deception roll, then by the time you guys get there, it'll be ready to go. Uh, unfortunately... Because I bought my friend a fusion cutter, I no longer, <laughs> and with that 20% markup, I no longer have the cash. Okay. I'm literally 200 credits short. <laughs> Actually, sorry, 170. Oh. Do you walk Do back on Tell anybody? And, yeah. <laughs> no, no. What a drag. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, actually, if I got just it and I didn't get like all the trimmings that I want to put on it, I could afford it. Yeah, you can but get at the same point at the same point in time it's like he, uh, as far as he would have gotten like a, a crew doesn't know how any of this works. Right. Like how special orderings or things like that work. He he only knows go up to stall, ask right. if have, oh you don't have, goodbye. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh through the conversation the person at the at the stall or whoever you're talking to uh give you basically come up with the order of saying I want this and this and this and this on it. And as you're walking away, the guy tells you what the base price is. So a crew can sort of figure that out, that all the mods can be done later. Yeah. Uh, and the guy basically says, you know, if you're good, if you're handy with tools, you could probably mod it yourself. Oh, well, the, the mods are the the high-end scope that I want to put on it, which that can be done later. Right. And the the tripod, which, again, that can also be right. added on later. Those are, and those are standards, so that's not a problem. Right. It's mostly just getting the rifle, which right. at this point in time, because it's 2,000 base with a 20% markup, so it's 2,400 total. And, yeah, yeah. it's just like, oh, five days? Okay, bye. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I guess Dodd make a perception roll. Okay, I, I will say this. It's really not that important. Her crew wouldn't really be mentioning. 17 plus perception, so 28. Yeah. Uh, you see him come back, and he looks dejected. You don't have to tell anybody, but you're definitely projecting out that you just got shot down for this, for your uh, baby. Gotcha. All right. Let me know when we're in the air. Okay, uh, ship takes off and uh, heads into hyperspace. And so yeah. you guys have days, days. Right. Let me make sure. First thing I do, uh, what is the what is the game that I see Lashara play most often? Like a card game? I could ask Lashara, but I've observed you in your native state of trying to entertain yourself for a while. What do you do? Was she playing Sabak? Maybe. I don't know. Do you play a card game? Is there like an ancient often game that you play what do you do for fun um, yeah it's called spite the tagorian <laughs> <laughs> you guys are six days away from bakura okay so that's how long the travel is going to take lash i'm trying to appeal to you as a person yeah i'm looking for what you do uh <laughs> she she likes to read and okay. she likes I mean, we can come up with a game. I mean if you if you know do you know any games? Is this does this I mean if yeah. they've gotta cover Sabak in this somewhere, she probably would learn that. Yeah. Okay. Instead if I see her reading a lot, I'm going to just go and get a data pad and for like several hours I'm just gonna sit near her and read. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just Identity politics, right? Just trying to get get him to her to realize I identify with her right. by emulating her in some way. So <clears throat> I'd imagine that during this time, Hakru would be, this would basically be Hakru's schedule. There would be his shift for flying, the regular maintenance that he and Leto has to do, yeah. and he would and uh, Hakru would be showing 
I would say Rura would be not just like following along with you because you asked her to, but like if you're gonna show her the ship and things that work and yeah. the mechanics of the ship, she is all ears. Yeah, like and, and like like the maintenance. It's like oh. okay, so like here, here's like the th- here's like the here are the checklists and the diagnostics that we run through. Right. Um, and then when it comes to, like, even on, like, piloting ships, like, if she's ever interested, like, comes up there, he explains what all the, the, all the switches and everything do. But he does it in a crew terms because he's never actually been taught how to pilot. He just... <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> She doesn't have pilot and trained skills, so yeah. she's gonna learn this. She's gonna learn the Hakru way. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? The Hakru way has gotten us out of our only space battle. All right. Yep. Um, and then after that, there would be like, because Lash is confined to her room, he would then be cooking. No, no, she's not. She, she's. Oh, okay. You know, she'll, she'll come out. She just, you know. Okay. Uh, then so then we so we so he's either doing his maintenance, doing his piloting shift, um, and then learning as much as he can about computers uh, okay. and droid specs. Okay. And then sleep. I admit that that sounds like a really full day to me. Okay. So uh, I'll, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, ahead Jed. Uh, okay. Um, I, at some point along the way, I'll find Rura and. Um, make sure she has a uh some working knowledge of a blaster pistol and oh, i'll yeah. make sure she has one yeah that's what i was gonna say uh can i i i, I have a bunch of equipment that i probably didn't right. have when i was to that pod so between it's, bespin and baccara can i pick it all yeah, up yeah yeah or we could say it was in we the, it, a bunch yeah it they took everything from the two ships stuck in their hold and then sold off what they needed. So your stuff's probably, I mean your stuff. your spear's probably in there. Some other yeah. stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so um, Hakru's hunched over, uh, messing around with with Leto and then comparing it to something he's reading on the computer, right? Okay. Uh, no, no, no. I would not be taking Leto apart or anything like that. It would very much be like like. You know, like when you're in like study hall and you have to ask the teacher a question, they they come on over and you're like, okay, so when I look at this, this means this, right? Okay. And they like, okay, yeah, but actually, he's more of like my TA yeah. than me actually yeah. doing anything to with him. Okay. He might so voluntarily we'll... open up a compartment and be like, see this wire here. Yeah. Right. So you two can so... install the um, the torch on him if you want. Yeah, that's just a mechanics check. Right. Um, oh, she. I did it now. Like, I have an, an aptitude that I didn't know that I had. Before. Right. So she can assist that sort of sure. thing. I don't think okay, it's so, much. So while he, while he's doing whatever it is that he's doing, I'm going to come up behind him, and lean on the bulkhead behind, and I'm going to say, so, a crew, what is it? Is it a girl? Uh, so real quick, on the... Because two things. So installing this, we'll have to look up what the exact number is. But I've got a 23 on myself. Um, if Mary gets a 10, then that becomes a 25. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to look up what the installation is. Yeah. But Tool or instrument uh, mounted on appendage, DC 15 mechanics, uh, representing 10 minutes of work. You take a minus 5 on your mechanics check if installing a weapon on a first, second, or third, or fifth degree droid. And I think it's a third degree droid. Cool. Yeah. And I've got all the tools and everything, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so when he, so when uh, you lean over and say that, and it's like, is it a girl? It's like, like he, he like a crew stops and like looks around. Like, hmm? I know a crew well enough now to understand his. And he, he, he points over columns. at, at, he points over at a, what's your name again? Ra- Rura. 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 He points over at Rura. No. You came back to the ship, bud. You were, you're looking like somebody shot your girlfriend. Or, I almost said dog, but that would be really inappropriate in this setting. But, uh, but uh, yeah, you look pretty bent out of shape. What's going on, man? Is it, is it Lash? Is it her attitudes? Is it is Jad not shooting at you enough? What's going on? Jad never shoots at me. It was a figure I'm, of I'm, I'm only bent because I'm sitting. Hakru, 
You seemed upset. How come? Like, he's legitimately confused. <laughs> when you came back from Bespin City. Oh. Um, oh, he's, he's nothing. Maybe nothing, but you're with us. So, what's going on? You know, um, the nuts, long gun? Yeah, yeah. I wanted one too. Oh, you couldn't get it through proper channels. Again, you couldn't, just you couldn't acquire one in the city. Yes, he it, uh, he said it would take um, uh, five days, and um, we did not have five days. We've got five days now. How much money you got? How much are you willing to spend? He pulls he, like he, he pulls out like all of his money. He okay. wouldn't have it on. He wouldn't keep it on. I'd be back in his right just uh, bunk. He's like, it. he's like, um, I'm not sure exact uh, exact amount. I mean, it's just whatever I have not spent. Okay. Do you know how much you have that you're willing to spend? Uh, whatever I have. All right. I don't uh, come find me in an hour. I'm gonna <laughs> go just turn and walk away. <laughs> he looks over at uh, Leto and Ra. Rora. 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 <laughs> Ra is not Ra Rora. is the second symbol, not the first. Rora. 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 And just goes, like you're saying rural. Rural. <laughs> yeah. Roger. Like, I wish. I wish money was simple, like fixing things. I mean, it's a pretty simple concept. See, fixing things is easy because it goes part, place, broken part, remove from place. But um, mon money uh, credits, it... um. You go to one stall and a a food is, you know, seven credits. You go to a stall further down and now it's nine credits. And you go to outside city and now it's three credits. <laughs> See, this is, yes. Yeah. No, it's all the same part, all the same food. It is, it is. See, money is the simple thing. Money is easy. You transfer this thing that has no intrinsic value, but people put on it for another thing that has intrinsic value, but, you know, we arbitrarily make things up. It's the economics that you think are confusing. In 17, 16, and 20 are my roles. Four and three. Okay. And three. In whatever order you feel like it makes sense. And that was... Uh, um... Use computers, 14. Uh, persuasion is nine. Gather information okay. is nine. Okay. Uh, did you want to go the... Um, the that, so your persuasion check, that's what you did, right? What was it? Okay. The order of the rolls were 17, 16, and 20. And that's that's modified? Not modified. Um, the three skills that I think you asked for were use computer, which is 14. Right. And then the other two are nines. Okay. Okay. Basically, very so inevitable art section. The while they do he that. doesn't understand intrinsic. Right. He doesn't understand abstract. These are words he has no idea what they mean. And like his face hurt thinking. Like he made a hurt face trying to comprehend your words. And she's literally spent half of her life raising children, so she recognizes your confusion and does absolutely her best to answer whatever. Like she's very good at. Okay, let me try to dumb this down for a five-year-old. Here we go. <laughs> Got to break it down Barney style. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Well, so that interaction's happening. Dice rolls on okay. what he's doing. So the first one you found uh, who you need to talk to. The second roll is your persuasion, which you need okay. to hit a 20. So okay, do you want to... 16 plus a 9. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I asked for the skill, just when the roll, add everything together. Otherwise, if you say okay. 16, you failed. Well, I didn't but know what you... uh, I didn't know what skill goes with what, what right. role or what order. So I just wanted. I was hoping that I could explain what my roles were, tell you what my skills were, and you could just 
right. figure it out off yeah. screen. But what I'm saying <laughs> is just add it together because when you said right. 16, I'm like, no, that didn't, that, that didn't beat the 20, but with a nine, yes, it beats the 20. Uh, okay. And what was the last one you rolled? The a last 20? skill? Yeah. The last the 20 plus the skill is nine. Okay. So 20, uh, 29. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was that? Was that was bargaining, basically? Oh, okay. Okay. So my idea was find find a seller, negotiate the sale, right? Negotiate the price, right? But I, if you have a different idea about nope. it, I've got the dice rolls right here. Nope. And you can apply it to whatever skill. Gather information. Nope. Nope. That looks like it's good. Nothing's okay. rare. And what was it? Times yeah, I'm sorry, four? I messed that up. Okay, nope, so. nope. Just give me the the total. Otherwise, I, I you know I don't know what you're yeah, adding to it. So gotcha. it looks like you can get it uh, instead of twenty uh, percent on top. It's only ten percent on top. Seems reasonable. Whatever that price is, um, I'll hold on to that in my back card. I'll tell him, yeah, you got a deal. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I'll let her crew know once we land. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring him in on this until because God knows what that man thinks. Yeah. Um, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. So back to the others who were talking. Are you guys done? We can be done. It was. Okay. Just, it was just some flavor things. It's like. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's an, the economics are hard. Things you don't find intrinsic value and just a cruise like. Uh, right. Okay. And then like, okay, we'll stop and break it down and be like, okay, so this is how we determine value. Yeah. And this can go on but for a couple days. Time, at the same point in time, like you see him doing like his droid and computer work and he understands like how to easily convert like amps over ohms, resistance, tension. Yeah. Like he understands all of this. Yeah. Economics? No idea. <laughs> uh, Mary, roll your mechanics. Uh, that is a 18. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, you, after a day of trying to talk to him and off and on, you figure out how to explain it to him in a mechanical way. And it, it, it comes across pretty clear to him. Um, but it does take a day for you to like kind of figure out how to re re adjust things or tell him how it's going to uh, sound to him. So, Day later, you guys both are on the same page of how that all sort how of works. How money works. Yeah. Yeah. And markets and different markets have different, yeah, it all it all sort of make, falls into place, actually. You're spilling supply and demand. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> middleman and transport costs. Yeah. And, and, and right. Anytime you say middleman, he just goes, dud. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Uh, and while you guys are talking, you guys kind of figure out each other's skill and mechanics. Right now, Dot has like a, was it a plus nine to your rolls? Me? Yeah. Not Dot. Um, I'm sorry, Hakru. Uh, yeah, Hakru. Oh, sorry. I think everybody's. Right there uh, I believe it's a nine. I think it is. Okay. So, Mary, you've got a seven. If you yeah. wanted to do the additional skill bump, so you get an additional five, that way you would sort of solidify your places of the mechanic down the road or next okay. level or whatever you want to do yeah yeah she's not super smart so she's just kind of going on training here yeah her in, so. it's natural i think i think that's how we wrote her up yep okay all right uh you guys is there anything else anyone wants to do in the meantime talk to lash or i'm gonna continue to be near lash quite a bit okay. doing things like she would do Okay. Until she wants to talk to me about the situation. Okay. But I'm going to make it real clear that I'm not leaving her alone. <laughs> uh, and I'm just kind of staying there, not talking, just reading a book or doing whatever it is that she's doing until she's ready to open up. That's between you two. I mean, you're basically trying to gather information and how would you fight that lash? I don't know. It, it, she gets the impression fairly quickly that uh, everyone's taking it uh, farther than she wants to explain. Right. Uh, <laughs> so she's okay with them just understanding that she's a racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's really an awful thing to be, man. <laughs> 
it happens. Yeah. Um, the, the, it, I mean, she she'll explain to Dad that you know all all these feelings don't come from anywhere. It's just understood. It's just understood that Tagorans are a lesser life form and that they smell bad and that they're not smart and that uh, you know as a people they're dirty and. Um, they'll pee, you know, they'll pee in your shoes, you know, that sort of they're, thing. They're <laughs> only that's... useful for catching rodents, yep. poop in boxes. Yeah. <laughs> so dad says, dad says, okay, I understand. Constantly licking but themselves. I also, Ugh. I also understand that you've got a, a bounty of grace and I... that you can look favorably on this person with a lot of genuine sympathy for their position, right? If they weren't a Goran. <laughs> <laughs> does he really say that, or does he? Does my empathy roll, or oh, my no. persuasion roll go that bad? No. You could roll persuasion and see what you get, but it's it's kind of fighting. A fighting nature. And her I intelligence. Anyway. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, you end up laughing along with the racist jokes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't he, think you would do that necessarily, but he's he talking, definitely is like, like, look, man. Talking to her and pooping the shoes, and he turns around and goes, oh. <laughs> oh. No, no, it's not. They don't, they don't all poop in your shoes, but. <laughs> um, does anybody ever refer to Lash as, as a boffin, or do they just refer to her by name? I don't even think I know that she's a boffin. By because name. until that happens, Rora is going to remain very confused. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, we can save, we can save that for we we've got a yeah. lot of RP going yeah. on today, so we yeah. can save that for a different day if we want. Yeah, yeah. guys, no. RP is my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, okay. and you're getting yeah. plenty of it. Let's, let's yeah. not wash it all out in one session. Let's let's yeah, just keep going like, for a while. A crew recognizes that we're all different it. races, mm-hmm. but he has no idea what any of you. Are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I kind of like the excuse of that coming up later and Rora having a sudden realization. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this goes on for a couple days until you guys finally enter the system, drop out of hyperspace, and uh, go to land. Um, nothing, yeah, nothing bad happens. Uh, you guys land on the, on the, uh, the pad. People come out. Um, it's a... Large um, Twi'lek, and he is good sized and kind of comes waddling out. Um, looks kind of like he's nicely dressed, but it it he still looks sleazy somehow. And he he meets you in the cargo hold, and he's got some guys with him, and they're all kind of armed. It's really it doesn't feel super safe. Like you didn't get this when you were talking to him on the hollow vid, but it feels a little. Like, you don't want to ask what he's going to use it for, sort of thing. Are you Dodd? Yeah, today I am. Are you, uh, and I look at my, I look at my register. Chora. Who do I have here? <laughs> uh, I am Chora today. He gives you a Chora. really, really weird, like, teethy smile. Uh-huh. We're used I wish to those. Spoke. We live with the knot. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I wish I spoke uh I wish I spoke uh uh Twi'lek, but uh because they have uh, a fantastic accent. If you listen to them speak in the uh cartoons, they are very French. Yeah. But uh anyway. Um so I say, Okay, well, if your credits are good, we've got your supplies. I, he holds over a pad and says, Just put your fingerprint here. His name is uh, Chur, is what he gave you, C-H-U-R. Chur. Sorry. Okay. I look at him and make sure he doesn't isn't emblazoned with the uh, with the Chitari emblem. Perception. Okay. Fourteen plus nine, twenty-three. Uh, that does not make it. Do you want to spend a force point? 
So no, you you kind of give them a quick once over without being like a obvious about it. Right. Or trying not to be right. Obvious. Uh, and he hands you the, the pad and you put your thumbprint on it and it transfers credits um, and and uh, rights. And so his guys start walking on with small repulsor belts they sort of put around the pods and it lifts it up. Okay. How long are you staying? Uh, just long enough to finish up a little bit of business and then we're moving on. Ah. Why, do you have a delivery that needs to be done? Well, it depends on your, your destination. Uh, Nanat, what's our next destination? Uh, from the okay. cockpit, you hear him go, wild space. Yeah, it looks like we don't have a deal for you. Sorry. Uh, hold, 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 hold on just a second. There might be something. Are you heading? Then he kind of gives you some coordinates. Or t- talks loud enough into the speaker uh, coordinate wise. Um, the knot sits there for a second, and he says, "I'm not sure." Leto, we'll have to get ask Leto if it's on the way. All right. What's the deal, Chora? I was just wondering if you could pick something up for me out there. What is it you're interested in? Uh, it's it's a, uh, a med- medium sized animal. We've heard uh. stories about them. But you would have to do a little hunting. We're not particularly equipped for for zookeeping right now. Dump, 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 dump. Nano comes running down. He's all, did did someone, uh, yes, we'll do it. If it's on the way. If it's on the way. That's my thing. All right, Jura. You got a deal. What kind of money are we talking about before the pilot agrees to everything? (laughs) One thousand four hundred. Nope. Sorry, we've got our destination. The big hand goes on your head, uh, and he kind of pushes you aside. And he says, "We'll take it if it's on the way." And he pushes the button on the communication. Leto, come here. Come to the cargo mm-hmm. bay. Eventually, uh, like Leto comes squawking in, and he says, "Give him the coordinates." And he reads them off. Are these close? Are these on our way? And Leto says, yeah, it's, it's pretty much in line with where we'll be going. All right. This is excellent. Yes. Delivery back here? Uh, yes. Fuel charges. You pay for the fuel. If you're heading out that direction and coming back. Yeah, coming back. It's going to cost us three times the fuel to do that. So you're going to stay out in wild space? No, we have a destination not wild space. Nanat turns to you and Leto kind of looks at you at the same time. Uh, Nanat says, 1,400 sounds good. We'll swing back by on the way out. Uh, fine. We just need a description of the, of the animal. Anything you can, you can give us. And he turns around on one of his men, hands him a little tiny pad, and he Hands it over to Not. Not quickly looks it up. Uh, hey, Jad, I need you down here at the ramp. Uh, I'll assume it's bad and uh, <laughs> grab my uh, blaster. Grab my E-Web. Head down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grab my to who this may concern. Yep. <laughs> and I got the E-Web is just more of a, hey, you there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, this is more your kind of thing than it is mine. Uh, talk to talk to your new boss, Shuro. He's got a job for us. And, All uh, right, I go back up the ramp. Okay. So uh, no, I, go, I don't. I go find Hakru and I grab him and uh, start dragging him out of the ship because we're going to go to the city. Okay. Nanat hands you a little pad with a a creature on it. He says it's a hunt, and it's on our way. No, not did you just say a hunt? A hunt. Oh yeah. When I come back, ready. Down, uh, I'm ready. He's growling. I pat them both on the on the shoulder, and I say, "See, Jed, it's not all bad, is it?" I usually is. <laughs> <laughs> what the? How are you taking me manhandling you? Are you cool with it, or are you? So okay. So here's here's the question, like. 
if you come and like like put a hand on his shoulder, it's like, hey, we're going into the city. He will just stand up and follow you. Okay. But if you like physically drag him, there's going to be a different response. <laughs> yeah, no, I put my hand on. We're hey, we're going to the city. Oh, okay. He puts bring your money. Market. Bring your money. Okay. He runs to his. Uh, he runs to his bunk. He grabs his credits. He runs back. Okay. He goes. <clears throat> That's it? <laughs> yeah, he just strutts back, he just stares. Just... Okay, that's where I walk back and I tap the cat on the shoulder. I, uh, I, can we use your bike? We need bikes. Come on, let's get the bikes out. Okay, the crew grabs his bike. and Okay. It's the one with the flames on it. Yeah, I grabbed the other one. You, you said when we got it from the guy, it had flames on it, and a yep. crew has kept them in pristine condition. Yep. He is convinced it makes it go faster. Yep. I'm glad. Well, they Switch are priorities. Red. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys going to talk about this hunt for a little bit? or? I think, I think Rora is like in the cargo bay helping unload things, and so she's like witnesses yep. the massive excitement these two have, and she's just like, I guess all males are the same. Yep. <laughs> yep. And with that, he he notices you like looking at me, points to you, and he goes, "Are you in?" I mean, I don't even know what what are you hunting. What's he walks over and hands you the pad. Uh, it's a medium sized creature, four legs, two arms. And it's got some coordinates for the planet it's on. Can I? Th they I wanted have... it alive, right? Yes. I have some knowledge life sciences. Can I roll to see what I know about this sure. or recognize it all? Or? Uh, this would be gal galactic lore. Um, there wasn't really like a biology, so I went with life sciences. Yeah, yeah, that hits all those. Yeah. Um, okay. You'd have to, there's nothing about the planet it's on or anything, so it's kind of plucked uh, like a chicken in a, in a you know, thing. Mm -hmm. It has nothing about its eating habits or anything like that. I mean, it could be fun. I've never been on a hunt. Ah, uh, you'll like it. Unfortunately, we have to set the stun on this one. That's all right. Oh, I did find out about stun. We'll we'll talk about that at the end of the. Well, here in a minute, so we're almost done. So, um, you guys will. Sa I guess we'll just save the trip into the city for next time unless there's unless it's just a quick you want to grab some items and that's it we're picking up a a a, uh, a sniper yeah pre-negotiated sniper rifle. okay that's pretty fast then um yeah. nanat uh as we're leaving that scene says to uh, jad and uh, Rura, uh we need some binders that we can hold this thing and maybe you know something to tie it, you know, to to contain it in um, the med bay area. So yeah, the cage, right. yeah, right. something like that. Yep. Yeah. So you guys go off in the city to find various items to basically put bars, a, a door inside with bars, so that when it opens, it nothing can just run out. Mm -hmm. um, you two speeder bike in. Uh, it's not very far away. It's about twenty minutes. Uh, okay. And you guys get to your location. It is um, it is a government facility. Um, I want to say it's a small military outpost. <clears throat> Not quite looking for the police, but yeah, I'll go up to the first person that I see and I I uh, hold up my pad. I'm looking for this person. Uh, he's expecting me. Oris, uh, I'll go get Oris, and he Sounds great. turns around. Uh, sure is the Twi'lek. Twi'lek. What? And it's the guy we just sold the. No, I'm writing the names down. <laughs> oh. And Oris is the <laughs> government. He has characters to add to the wiki now because yeah. you made him make an NPC. <laughs> Official. Uh, Oris comes back. He's just a, 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 an off human, and uh, he's got this black sort of military. Uh, uniform on and he mm -hmm. says he, yes hi this is my id uh we had negotiated a deal for this item uh, he turns back and he hands it back to you and says uh meet me at the uh, 
some market uh, in about five minutes. I'll be over there. Okay. Thank you. A crew, we're going. Okay. You guys head Where off. Are we going? As you guys head off, he turns around and says, I need uh, to take my break now. And then he takes off. A couple minutes later, he shows up in sort of like a parka with a hood over it. And uh, he f- sits at a table uh, near where you guys are. And he kind of nods for you to come over. Okay. Uh, you guys sit down. Yeah. He uh, hands out a pad to transfer credits over to to him. Akur, this is your, this is where you pay the man. Okay. Uh, he takes out his little, I guess they'd be like credit sticks and just yeah. jams them in or. Yep. And it depletes it. Uh, he takes it back and then he slowly under the table scoots the uh, case, the suitcase or whatever it is over to your side. Uh, he sits there for a couple more minutes and then he stands up. He makes some idle chit chat just... about the weather, that sort of thing. Right. What yeah. did I just buy? We keep the we keep the chatter minimal. Right. Uh, I'll show you when we are on our way back. Okay. Uh, the guy stands up and uh, gives you a slight nod and then walks off. We stay there for another ten minutes. And then okay. Around. Yeah. Well, it, you guys perception there, rolls. Nothing's happening. Um, and this is a GM call. So, um, Lash has good galactic knowledge and all, all her reading and stuff. She right. knows that that uh, Bakura is known for repulsor lifts. Like there's big companies here that are right. repulsor lift manufacturers, um, and I'd like for her to look up a contact and use some of her uh, um, negotiation skills to see if uh, anybody wants. It's an armor upgrade that lets you basically have falling damage, and and you can like hover a meter off the ground uh, if it's cool. You know, give a discount on the price. Usually, like a thousand. But since we're at the source of where they come from, right? And so, Lash would know that. So these are just personal, like a belt you'd wear. Yeah, it's it's an armor upgrade, and they just fit onto your armor. And it's basically the same type of type of repulsors that droids use. Ah, uh, okay. What oh, like wearing armor? like it'd be like what Cad Bane wears on his boots. Yeah. Okay. It's it's less than a jetpack, but. Um, can be used sort of like one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're able to find a person. Uh, actually, go ahead and roll your gather information. Sure. Rolled an 18. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a local representative named uh, Jido, J I D O, and she's selling uh, custom made repulsor equipment. And she can customize yeah. it in anything, so it doesn't have to be in certain armor or on a backpack or anything like that. It could be a belt. It could be on your shoes. Uh, like, like, um, uh, oh, shit, spurs sort of thing. They just sort of attach onto your boots. Um, so Pretty once reasonable. She that, once she makes that contact, she's just going to let Dodd and Hakuryu know that while they're in town uh, via a comm link. Okay. That, uh, hey, if you're interested... Uh, I have a contact on the planet here that uh, sells repulsor lifts uh, fairly cheap. Uh, pretty big discount. Don't know if you're interested, but I uh, figured I'd let you know. Awesome. Thank you, Lashara. What is repulsor lift? Uh, lift, like, move crates? Speeder bike. You can see how the speeder bike uh, stays up off the ground without wheels. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's repulsor technology. Oh. So it's... it's uh, yeah, the, do I know you have a jetpack? Yeah, of course I know. Yeah, everyone jetpack. knows I have a jetpack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like your jetpack. Oh, it's common my, my, too. So it's. My, my, uh, yeah, I was just I was just hoping to get them a discount since we're at the source. Yeah. If anybody wanted one, that's all I was after. It's a cool idea. I might. I don't have a whole lot of money left though. But uh, we. I'm going to take uh, take Hakuru a little bit out of town before I go back and investigate the the thing because I want him to see what he just bought. I'm hoping it's adequate because hmm. I don't want to owe him money. Anyway, so we get uh, we get a little bit out of town, <clears throat> outside of the sight of the local authorities or military, and I say, okay, open up the case. He opens it up. And, and inside is your, your gun that you've been trying to get. It's yeah. just and, a uh, basic version of it, but... Yeah. And we, well, it's even like the, the upgrades are common upgrades I can get anywhere. Right. right. Um, he goes, oh, yes, excellent. 
<laughs> Nenat was very good with uh, with this in our last uh, um, situation on the key, and I figured uh, more is better, so I I wanted to get one too. Okay, now I know what I I e commerced. Yep. You just you I look at him and I e commerced. You know, her crew, you're all grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am of mating age. Uh, yeah. uh, That's also impressive news. I'm very. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to the city really quick. Feel free to follow me or go back to. Uh, actually, I mean, it's my speeders. That, yeah. <laughs> why don't you? Why don't you get that that uh, that uh, weapon back to the ship? Because I'm not entirely convinced that it's no. legal. No. Okay. It sure. So yeah, he's gonna. Put it on his speeder. He's gonna zip to the uh, um, the ripper. Zip back to the ship, store it, and there's one other thing I want to check. Uh, you both get a note on your pads that Jito uh, is selling uh, repulsor lifts custom made for eight fifty. I don't think I have eight fifty left. I threw. I've got about fifteen hundred left. I guess. I really feel like I should hold on to that just in case. Because I, well, no, I've got 2,500 because Nanak gave me another thousand back. Yep. Yep. You know what? I'm going to get some, get some Cad Bane style boots. Okay. Because that was pretty cool. We don't have to role play it or anything. I just go into town and buy them. Okay. Uh, and yeah, no, don't have to role play this. Um, Hakru would go and purchase the enhanced low light uh, targeting scope. Okay. The, All right. The the bipod will have to wait. Yeah. And I was on the fence as whether or not I would get that anyways. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're going to call it here for the night. It's 10 o'clock. Um, be thinking about what you want to do uh, for next time. It's, we're going to be taking off into the wild, so that's going to be more of a navigation, astrogation session um, where you guys will be... <laughs> Mapping. Does this game set up for random encounters and that type of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll brush up on that a little bit. Uh, as far as stunning goes, what I've noticed in the Saga Edition wiki that's on online is it just says whether or not an, a, a weapon stuns. So there's no separate damage for the weapons. So what I'm going to do is just say, okay, it's whatever the damage is, the damage is. It's either stun or not stun and then we cut it in half so they may have been trying to do something where they were trying to automatically figure out what half would be rolled but we're just going to do whatever the full damage of the weapon is divide it in half and then apply it because it did have stun damage listed so right because and that's that's where we're getting confused because in the books it's we, listed so it's like so like right blaster carbine 3d8 is the normal damage and then it's stun damage is 2d8 but then if you go and you read the stun damage section mm -hmm. uh it would say okay so you set it to stun so you roll that damage and then you cut that in half and that's what actually gets applied right. but if the total damage you did was over the threshold then this is what happens right and okay. it so, was you you needed a goddamn spreadsheet in order right. to figure out how stun damage yeah. worked. So it's just and it was it, not worth it most of the time. No, and it's still really not going to be a whole lot worth it. So unless you want to shoot it with regular damage, and then at the last minute uh, start shooting with stun. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's basically mm -hmm. what we found it to be what you yeah. had to do. Yeah, so. you just you you light them up for a few hits, and then your last shot or two needs to be stunned, and then right. you can not kill them. Right. right. Yeah. Like if they wanted to keep it the way it was, instead of take if for stun damage, instead of taking it down a, a hit a right. damage die, go up one, right. then it becomes completely worth it. Right. It's like oh yeah, I hit this guy. It stuns them. Right. Because that big damage bonus, and now we cut that in half, and that's the actual damage right. that gets applied. Or or it doesn't get cut in half. It's just a double damage. Just roll the stun damage. Yeah. Dro yeah. Drop them down uh, on their um, tree a little bit. Right. Right. So, okay. so yeah, we were we were trying to figure that out, and it was just like it's not making sense. And then I got to looking at the weapons when I was populating all everybody's character sheets, and I saw but they don't even have the stun damage listed. It's just yes or no. It does stun damage. So, uh, they do on well, like melee weapons generally don't have stun. Right. But if you look at the range, 
there is a stun damage column. And yeah, the any... pistol has the two D eight stun damage. Like that was specifically listed. Not in the right. wiki. So I don't oh, yeah, know. Yeah, not in the wiki. So, this is in the books. Right. So right. I'm assuming the wiki has thrown that out at one point, or there was some sort of uh, errata put out at one point. I don't know. So we'll just Probably. go with the wiki because the wiki seems to be very up to date with everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll default from, like, default to that on everything we can. Yeah. Fun times, uh, you guys. We didn't get to, there's been errata. There's been right. <laughs> yeah. We haven't been able to shoot much up on this one, but uh, lots of uh, good character building yeah. fun times, guys. Yeah. 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 And that's probably what this next session is going to be a lot more character building um, RP opportunity while you guys are traveling. Because each square is going to take two days to get through while you guys are sort of making jumps and plotting and taking readings and then make another jump and that sort of stuff. So, Is there, I mean, I know we're going to a temple and there's probably going to be more stuff for Lashara's storyline to build fairly quickly, right. but is there anything that she can do? I've been I've been trying to find out what everyone knows about the Jedi and everything. You know, since it's after the Sith War and, right. and, and whatnot, and and you know, the information isn't hidden. Right. Like it's not like during the Emperor's reign right. or anything like that where stuff was erased. Right. Like she should be able to find some information. What I'm after here, why I'm even bringing it up, is you know she used the Force a little bit harder than I really wanted her to in that last battle when she pushed that desk. Right. But I, what I'm after is justification for that. Like I want her to, to be able to know you have, have, you know, some reading or something that she could have done to, to enhance those skills to that level. It's more emotion. Okay. Um, that, that did that. So, um, and I tried, I tried to do that, you know, yeah. the defense of Dodd and yeah. all that. Yeah. And it's, it's going to, it's going to play in. We'll, we'll be figuring out along the way. Um, think of this as the Shaolin monks back in the 14th you know, century. Everybody knew what they were, but they didn't know like how they did it. Their or... styles that they were fighting with and anything else. Mm -hmm. They were just this monastery of people that went out and helped and did some humanitarian stuff. Okay. They just came out of a big war. And so it's not like they're being secretive, but... Like you can't find books on how to do their, you know, force mm -hmm. powers or anything like that right now. So yeah, yeah, there's a little mystery okay. to it. Like like I said, people know they fought in a war uh, a few years ago, but not not the whole galaxy didn't witness firsthand. It may have been battles in space or in a city. Well, even in if there temples are a few thousand and Jedi around, that's still super rare. Right. You know, in the people, in a galaxy, don't encounter them. Right in a galaxy, yeah. So, if you're if you're maybe on Coruscant, you may have hear the stories a lot more because they're there and they may talk or people see them. It's it's like, you know, Hollywood back in the day. If you weren't in Hollywood, you had to like search through newspapers to find out what actors and actresses were doing that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. So it's not okay. totally unheard of, but it, yeah, it'll play out. Uh, cool. Right now, she's kind of raw, I'm assuming, and and just going on instinct more than training. Right. So, and I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, I am. I you know, I I just don't want her to become like powerful without the justification for that. Right. But also, it's like you've been doing a lot of pushing and pulling already, and right. you just went mm -hmm. for a bigger object. Right. So. Right. Right. And again, like Kirk said, it was fueled was by there. emotion. Right. It was fueled by emotion and. You know, that gave the extra umph. Right. So. Yeah, I think cool. it'll work out. So. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. Thank you. This has been a production of Gaming Without Gaming, all rights reserved. Visit us at GamingWithoutGaming.com. Follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash GamingWithoutGaming. Title music is by Greg Braun. Find him on SoundCloud.com backslash Clara7. That's K-L-A-R-A hyphen seven. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Gaming Without Gaming logo music is by Kevin McLeod.